Welcome back, everybody, to your favorite 420 podcast as your main host, as always, your boy Chino. And today's podcast guest we have today, the the minds behind the infused ice cream, as you already know, Jane and Mary's CEO, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jason. What's up, my yeah, boy? What's going on? What's going on? Good to see everybody. You know what I'm saying? Appreciate you having me on, man. I was excited to do this. So uh, it's great to get a chance to sit down and, and chop it up. I know, and most definitely, like I said before we even started, that um, just based on on the information we got already, it seems like it's gonna get deep and it's gonna get it's gonna be a long one tonight, boys. <laughs> so you know I'm what? Down, I'm down for the conversation. For sure. So let's let's take it back to 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 day one, Jason. I I know that um, from from what I we know back from your background, um, it's not really you dealt with cannabis before. Is that correct? Yeah, you know, I grew up uh I grew up around cannabis, man. My whole uh most of my family partake, you know what I mean? And so, you know, man, I I was born in 79, so I grew up in the eighties. So uh it had a definite definitely had a different um stigma around it, you know what I'm saying? But you know, mm-hmm. it was I've always been comfortable around it. Uh between you know, between my older brothers. I'm the youngest in the family, man. So I got older cousins, brothers uncles everybody so i've always been around the cannabis plant you know okay but besides growing up it, like yourself you know like working in the industry or all this is it's just been since your infuse company yeah um so um i began working in the cannabis industry specifically around 2015 okay you know and so what well, that came you know my background just give you a little bit of background about me uh, grew up born, you know, Chicago, Illinois, South Side, moved around, ended up moving out to Oak Park, graduated from Oak Park River Forest High School. Okay. Went to Illinois State, got my degree in history and decided to become a history teacher. My whole background was education. I wanted to coach. You know what I'm saying? While I was in college, I, I sold cars at Saturn. <laughs> you know, remember? <laughs> hey, remember Saturn's? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so I, I, uh, yeah, yeah, I sold a lot <laughs> he of looked at me like my dinner did. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> no, nah, yeah. So I sold a little, a whole bunch of those uh, Saturns, man. But I ended up getting my degree uh-huh. in education, man. So I, I became a teacher, middle school teacher, high school teacher, history teacher. Okay. You know, I and, coached and it, all that stuff, and so, but, but I ended up taking a break in between education, man, to open up a business. Man, I had an idea of opening up an ice cream shop. Okay. And so, what, what 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 made you want to be do the ice cream shop though? Like, why why ice cream? Man, I had a thousand ideas, man. But one day, <laughs> one day, uh, you know, I was at a uh, Cold Stone. Remember the early two thousands, man, when Cold Stone was just like popping off, man, lines out the building, and so it was a new concept around and people loved it. So I saw what Cold Stone was doing, uh-huh. and then um, um, I went to the mall one day. And uh, I'm a pastry guy. I love pastries, too. So I went to the mall and got, like, Mrs. Fields cookies, man. And it was, like, five cookies for $6. And I just saw margins. That's how my, my mind, where I'm like, man, I'm crazy margin. So then I said, man, what if I open up an ice cream and cookie shop? Mm-hmm. You know, so I did, uh, so I came up with this concept called Cookies and Cream, where we did homemade cookies, homemade ice cream, all there in the shop. So you built out this kitchen, beautiful shop. And, uh, man, just put a lot of effort in that concept, man. It's a franchise prototype, beautiful logos, beautiful everything. And, Mm -hmm. um, uh, the recession came 2008, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, I built this shop up in 2008, man. The shopping center was vacant. They stopped all the construction, you know, just, you know, everybody just went through a really, really hard time, man. And so it, yeah, so you know it's kind of hard to have a. That's fucked up. I was only like yeah. eight years old, man. Ah, uh, yeah. So do you remember that? <laughs> hey, listen, I got a question for you. Do you uh, remember the uh, McDonald's uh, dollar menu? Yeah. They created that dollar menu because of the recession. You know what I'm saying? So they wanted people to keep coming in. So that's why they went oh. to the dollar menu. You know, you see they don't have it no more, right? No, they don't. So. They, they, they got that two for three, that um, a double bundle. Like, what is this shit, man? I remember when, you know, French fries were a dollar. The large were a yep. dollar, bro. Yep. Everything exactly. was a dollar, right? Exactly. Might as well get the large, literally. Yep, yep. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, they created the dollar menu, man, during that mm-hmm. tough time. So, But to get to the cannabis, um, you know, we were open from 2008 to, like, 2013, man. We fought the good fight, but... We couldn't keep it afloat, had a lot of debt, 
Mm-hmm. And uh, but the ice cream was incredible. I mean, I learned how to make ice cream, and it was phenomenal. And I had a buddy, man. Actually, he reminded me of him. Man. His name was Carlos. Oh, and he okay. lived out in uh, <laughs> Seattle. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was like, man, you got to learn how to infuse this ice cream. And uh, I was like, what you mean, man? He's like, man, dude, if you can make this into an edible, well, you'll be you you'll be a millionaire, bro, multi millions. And uh, so I thought about it, man. But when the shop closed, I went back to teaching. Uh, you know teaching what I'm like, like 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 what you graduated from? Yep, yep. I went back to teaching, man. And so I didn't know how you know like how teaching in Canada. You know what I'm saying? You know, remember this is 2016. I'm living 2015. I'm living in North Carolina. You know, cannabis was like a a brand new concept as far as being legal mm-hmm. uh, in a whole country. So Seattle and and uh, Denver wasn't even really up and running yet. It was just Seattle had the the medical marijuana pop in California had the medical, you know, they were kind of like really early on with the medical. Into it, like the scrapes of it, you know? Yeah, 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 exactly. So I wasn't sure, man. So, but after thinking about it for a year and really just really educating my plant, especially on the medicinal side, you know, we know I grew up, you know, with people using, uh, you know, cannabis as, as, as a recreational thing. But man, when I really understood the medical benefits, bro, I was gung ho, and so that's when I put it all my all my uh, gusto into it. So, open up shop in Seattle, Washington, man. In 2015, Jane and Marys was born. Oh wow! Yep, that's crazy. Yeah, man. Since 2015. 2015, man. Jane yeah. and Mary, Seattle, Washington. I was in dispensaries. Uh-huh. We were, uh, you know, just just boots on the ground, you know. So, so, so then, is, so for, for that long, you you had your Instagram account and all that, like since since all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, actually, uh, yeah, you know, I I we revamped the Instagram, so I hid a lot of and archived a lot of those photos and pictures. Uh-huh. But yeah, man, I kicked off the Jane and Mary since 2015. Okay. Um, now we actually, uh, got we actually closed down, man, in Seattle and Washington when recreation came in, the recreational licenses. You know what I'm saying? Why is that though? Like why okay. why? okay, bro, let me paint this picture for you, man. You go out to Seattle. So you going from you know, I lived in North Carolina for 12 years. So I go from North Carolina, right, where cannabis still is not legal. And I go to Seattle, and it was a whole different world, bro. The medical marijuana setup was so beautiful. They had co-ops. You know what a co-op is? Wait, no, what what is that? Okay, so here's how I set up. I hope, I hope, this is a history, man, we can't lose. Wait, wait, hold on, um, if you want, um, I can look it up too, but yeah, you can continue Yeah, yeah, let me, yeah, let me explain it to you, man, it was a co-op, okay, so basically in the state of Washington, they passed a law that said, uh, let's just say 15 plants, every person can grow up to 15 plants for your personal use. Oh, right. Wow. That's for, that was oh, that's a lot. It is a lot. It is, it a, is lot. a lot. <laughs> right. So think about this. Mm-hmm. How many people will actually grow 15 plants? Not that many people. So what they would do is they would sign over their rights for their 15 plants to one facility. So the facility will grow X number of plants, 200, 300, all different strains, everything. And it opened up a community dispensary. And so as long as you signed up to that co-op, you can go to that dispensary and buy your cannabis, edibles, plants, flower, everything, because you had a right because you signed over your 15 plants and that allowed these people to grow legally. That was the makeup. So it was it was community dispensaries all over the city, bro, everywhere. You know what I mean? And so you don't you you can visit them, but (laughs) but but you went to your dispensary that you were signed up to i mean it was beautiful and so, it's called a co-op okay so then would how much of, of how much of these people would have to pay then or would it just walk in for free no 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 they would pay um i don't know i don't think it was called donations it was a lot of donations back then but they would pay mm-hmm. um but they just basically sign up their rights for somebody to grow so when you pay you basically pay for the services of them growing your plants and your edibles and all of that stuff so that was a, it was a very community-based market okay so then the state saw how much money they were making from the medical marijuana industry and they said you know but you had to have a medical card you had to go to the doctor you had to have 
you know, reasons, you know what I'm saying? Arthritis issues, health issues, whatever will qualify you for the plant. Mm -hmm. um, so you had to have a medical card. So they said, we go open this up to everybody who 21 and over and, uh, and really make some money off of this. And so they start opening up these recreational dispensaries. Now, if you're a little mom and pop shop co-op, how can you compete when the big dogs open up? And then when the big dogs opened up, everybody wanted to get a license, just like it is in Illinois. Everybody fighting for these licenses. They had a lottery process and the application process. Mm -hmm. And um, and some of them, some people got licenses, but most people didn't. And so what it ended up doing is um, it just really minimized the medical side and really promoted the recreational side. Now, the way that it affected me is everybody was trying to be compliant with the record laws in hopes of getting an application early. So even all, all of these little co-op dispensaries, they, even though they didn't have a license, as they were applying, they wanted to be in compliance with the law. And so the law will constantly roll out these new requirements on what they would, what it would take to get a license. And one day, man, one, one, one morning, they rolled out a law. It was like, uh, we're banning dairy. We're banning eggs. We're oh, banning, wow. you know what I'm saying? And so, so, so pretty much what they were saying is that anything that was sold that had to be in THC couldn't have those ingredients. Yep. And, and pretty so, much that's that's what you you yep, had every, carry. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So they literally pulled me off the shelves that day. So I got pulled off the shelves, uh, in all my dispensaries in one day. That's bogus. That's petty. It is. Bro. It is. It is. But it wasn't just me, man. It was a lot of people who fell under a lot of these different other requirements, man. But, so. But here's, I think here's the thing though. I I feel like with with like the example that you just said that it would happen to you. I feel like that's that's the thing that could happen to anybody in the industry here. You know that one day because I feel like that gets to do with like higher ups, the government, and type of that shit. Where I think that one day even gets to do with like whoever is running in office that just pulls the the plugs on the cannabis industry, and then that's that's gone. It's it's that's crazy, and I feel like us as the community and the people who are really into the, the cannabis and love for the planet, you know, it has to be the one that should be running this industry and should be doing as much as possible. It can for, for change to be possibly come true. You, you feel me? Cause like, I feel like there's only a certain amount of time or, or a certain amount where I think people tend to do where at the end, I think it just fades. And then we all come. It's like a whole cycle. Yeah. Yeah, man. I agree. I agree. I'm telling you, man, like I, I grew up in industry just around the people, the people who purchased the product. Mm -hmm. So that was my mindset. What do people want? What do they need? What do they choose? Uh, you know, how to get the best quality plant, how to get the best quality oil. And that's all I've been exposed to. And then like I walk into this meeting, man, of the industry. And once you get in the industry and you start being around industry people, you think it's the same vibe, but it ain't. No, is no like profit, tax, margins, exclusivity. How can we make sure nobody else get in? How can we make sure nobody else get licenses? You know what I'm saying? Uh, limited licensing, high tax. You know what I'm saying? And that's like every. I mean, I ain't, you know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I want to be too critical, right? Uh -huh. But, but it's a, it's a what you just described and what I experienced in Seattle has not been my experience here in Illinois. You know what I mean? It, it, the industry is just that industry. Just imagine, just imagine you in hip hop, you're an artist, you're a rapper, you're a singer, and you vibing out, and you loving, you make great art. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But then when you go over to the record industry, a lot of those people aren't happy because it ain't the same. They're not doing it for the same reasons. It's the same way with cannabis, man. So then what's your intake on that? Like, what, like, how's your experience then as, as an independent, you know, owner that, that's in the industry? Man, I, um, my take is try to meet the right people, you know, um, try to work with the right groups, but, uh, I just really been flying, you know, honestly, slow, solo, man, doing my thing, fighting but hard to stay com compliant. I'm just trying to respect the laws. At the same time, give give the people the best product I could can, and that's it. Like I'm not trying to get involved in the politics too much, the 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 debates, the the net, you know, the um the different sides and groups. I'm just trying to do my thing and provide the product for the people, man. 
But let's, so then how, how you just said they meet the right people and work with the right people. But like how much of the right people is in this industry, especially here in Illinois? Let's be honest. Yeah. Um, I'm, a, I'm a unique guy, man. Uh -huh. I, I've been able to meet really cool people and enjoy those relationships. Um, but but everything has kind of been at, at a shadow at a shadow level. You see what I'm saying? So, um, I'm an ice cream guy. That's mm -hmm. my job to be the ice cream guy. He's just an ice cream guy, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. <laughs> how well do you know the per How well do you know the person who works at the ice cream shop by you? You love them. You love to see them, but you don't know them very well. Like, right. hey, what's going on? You got ice cream. And you bounce. Yeah, I, you know just, I just close with it because you got the ice cream, man. You know, you, saw, <laughs> you, you got what I want. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly, man. So it's the same. It's the same concept, man. Hey, smile, dap up. Hey, you got the ice. What you? What new flavors? What you got? Boom, hit them up and keep it pushing. Right, see, you, see you next time. You know. Yeah, exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So you know, uh, so it's been working, man. Because, um, it's been working, man. You know, uh, but it's a lot of competition. It's a lot of. Uh, that is true. Uh, I mean, it's a lot of obstacles, man. So I just and, painted you the for obstacle I dealt with. It's a lot of obstacles, man. So I just got to stay low uh -huh. and just uh, and just keep growing, man. That's what's you up. know. And I most definitely feel you on, on the competency because, like, although like I'm I'm just you know a podcaster, you know, I, I there's I still feel like there's a lot of like sometimes tension. Mm -hmm. with, I felt within like no reason for it, you know, especially for the community and well, the, for the industry that we're in, you know, it's supposed mm -hmm. to be meant for everybody to be chill, get along. Yep. But yet yep. Like, we got these big MSOs companies and all these businessmen, you know, that's just trying to change the stigma or like just trying to change how the industry is trying to be. Cause like, although I've gone to Michigan, um, just like for a, like days and just a few hours, um, but just by being there in, in their cannabis community, it's so different. It's just different than here in Chicago. Yeah. Yeah, man. You know, and so so I, I walk a really fine line, right? Mm -hmm. Because um, I don't want to criticize the big companies because I want to be a big company like them. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? I want to grow. I want to I want to be a national brand mm -hmm. um, that's recognized, uh, you know, just for the quality of the ice cream and the quality quality of the medicine. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, so it's, so it's a fine line of, um, uh, I don't want to be too critical, mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, it is obstacles and every state is different. Like you said, Michigan, uh, you know, Missouri is kicking off big time and, um, you know, Illinois right in the middle of it. So, you know, uh, I love my state. Um, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, my ideal goal would be to flourish here, but it's going to cost a lot of money, man. And a lot of, you know, back kind of get some of these laws changed that allow, me to be in dispensaries because right now i'm currently not being sold in dispensaries i'm not in the regulated market in illinois is it because of, of some rules that illinois has yep yep illinois does not allow um frozen products uh to be sold in, in dispensaries so how about so, uh, smoke shops man that's that's what i did man i pivoted you know what i mean so what i did was i've mastered the hemp derived cannabinoids you know what I mean? And I use a phenomenal Delta 9 THC. I use a phenomenal uh, full spectrum CBD. I'm launching a new full spectrum CBD line, ice cream line called Sweet Dreams uh, in March. So you you got the exclusive right there. That's the exclusive. You're oh, the wow. first person I told outside of my team. But um, oh. it's, yeah, man, it's a full spectrum CBD, uh, high, uh, high CBN with mm -hmm. some THC and it's full spectrum. Uh, and it's perfect for bedtime. You know what I mean? So uh, so I'm launching that, uh, but I use a, I be I use a CBD ice cream, uh, a hemp derived D9, and um, and then I got the full spectrum line coming out, and so uh, so so that allows me to you know sell directly to consumers, you know what I'm saying? And so that's what I do. So, how about with, like with, with with the goals of oh. being in a regulated market? So right now I'm in talks with different states, you know what I'm saying? So different states have different laws. So I want to be in the regulated market right uh and also want to uh thrive with the hemp derived cannabinoids what's like the closest state that's uh, that i mean what's the state that's that's closest that, that you're close to to be like in a dispensary well i mean i i don't want to say too much but we got okay i'll give you some states that uh are ice cream friendly okay massachusetts uh new york 
um, California and um, uh, Nevada mm -hmm. is for our sorbets because I make ice cream at sorbet. So Nevada for the sorbets uh, and the same thing in Minnesota with the sorbets. Okay. And then within those states that you just mentioned, is there already like companies or similar brands to you, to you already? Or nah, nah. Or well, in Massachusetts, like yeah, first? yeah. Yeah. I'm not the first. I'm not the first. I mean, ice cream is a beast. The logistics mm -hmm. and the, um, the, uh, yeah, man, really the logistics of ice cream making, the fact that you're dealing with dairy, dairy is a, um, it is a, uh, is ranked very very high on like for the health department for regulation right because it's it's like meat so you got like meats and poultry right and you have like dairy and eggs so those are like the two highest so if i'm dealing with i don't know popcorn or cotton candy there's no problems but when you start to move in there so it gets really tough and then you're dealing with the logistics of dealing with a frozen product it's very very expensive um and so so think about think about the business model for some ice cream are you providing freezers right mm -hmm. that alone you know what i mean you know that's a huge upfront cost to provide freezers to all your accounts that's what i was doing that's what i'm doing here in illinois um or you know what i was doing that was the model before in illinois it was i'll provide the freezer and then they ordered ice cream um so it's just a lot of different things but there are great people there are great companies out there doing ice cream um um but the sustainability has been has been uh really difficult to to scale right because think about it you can do well in your city. How do you scale past your city? How do you scale past your state? How do you grow? So that's what we've been working on for the last year. So like giving like just trying to give out test tries or, or something like that out there to different states? Or yeah. Oh, definitely, man. We, I mean, you know, you can find right now, you can find Jane and Mary's uh -huh. in Illinois, uh, Minnesota, um, uh, Ohio, West Virginia, Texas, Florida, Georgia. And New Jersey right now. And like you know is what that I mean? like, like in like in smoke shops or just like you just deliver Yep, see like level re see, yep, see level retailers. Uh see level retailers, retail stores. So you got any in the suburbs? Any like in Illinois? Illinois? Yeah, 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 for sure. Okay, okay. Wait, probably, where where where, do, where are you at? Where are you I'm where do you I stay around probably you know, nearby would be like Barrowin, uh Melrose Park. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh Brook um uh, uh Brookfield. Brookfield, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Hey, wait, you gotta let me know which one, and then yeah, I'll I will, I will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. swing by. Yeah, most definitely. Yep. Um, but that's what's up, man. That you even although you got a, a main goal, you're still trying to you know do swerve through and stuff like you know to get you through as well it's just to ex get exposure, you know. Yeah, yeah, man. You gotta that's navigate smart, the though. industry. That's smart. That's smart. That's smart too. You know that like, if you can't find one way, you gotta you can find another way right <laughs> Man, exactly that's the key that's the key you can't you can't get married to one idea too long um you know if it works it works if it don't you know figure it out so that's my job is to be a uh, to be solution oriented so that i'm trying to ask more cannabis related questions later at the show but let's yeah, go yeah. back before before the cannabis let's let's hit what you're you were a teacher i was that yeah man man I guess I got a personality, man. That's that's very. I think you probably pick up some themes, but uh, man, I love teaching, man. I loved it. Uh, I was a history teacher. That's my favorite discipline. Um, Why you know, history? This, I, don't, I don't know, man. I think it's just a <laughs> raised, man. I was raised, you know. I was raised a, uh, you know, I was just, you know, a black militant on the south side of Chicago, man. At one point, you know what I'm saying, but you just get kind of get an appreciation first for you know African American history. Uh -huh. And then you get an appreciation for world history. You get appreciation for American history. You know, um, you get appreciation for um, social things. I'm just more of a, I'm, I'm definitely more on a liberal arts side, the, you know, politics, economics, you know, geography, how that all plays into, you know, human development. man. so, yeah, yeah. So I just loved it. I just was natural. And I love sports. So the goal was to coach. And if you want to coach, what do you want to do? Well, you go, well, if I'm a teacher, I can coach. Okay, if you coach, if you teach, what do you want to teach? Teach history. So. Uh, give a good motivation speech, you know, or whatever, <laughs> you know, to these kids, yeah. the young ones. Yeah, man, exactly. So it's wild <laughs> out there, man. My oh, last teaching definitely. job, man, my last, yeah, my last teaching job was in 2007, no, 2018. 
I had a teaching job. Did you ever teach here in Chicago? Yeah, man. I was on the west side. On the, oh, I was on the west side. Uh, uh, what, what, what school? DRW. It was a Noble Academy school. Are you familiar with Noble Academy? Dude, <laughs> I, I'm a I'm a Noble graduate. Oh, bro. Hey, salute to you, man. Hey, because that's the you. That, that was the hardest. That was the hardest job I ever had in my life, man. Really? It was hard, bro. Really? You ever heard uh, of DRW? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, I graduated in 2018. From where? From Noble. From Noble Street. The really? Original campus. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy, man. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome, man. Congratulations, man. Yeah, thank um, you. Uh, but uh, I, I, here's the thing. I mean, as a student point of view, com- you know, coming from from a CPS middle school and all. Yeah. I feel like like Noble was. I feel like was less wild than a CPS would, you know, compared to oh, like how my yeah. friends would would talk to me about, you know, of how their experiences were and yeah. stuff like that. You know, I was like. Was yeah <laughs> yeah yeah no absolutely absolutely here's what i tell people if you graduate from a noble school you will graduate with a higher gpa you will have better test scores um you know uh more selection for college applications they they prepare you uh for college uh in a way that uh you know very few high schools can in illinois so that's a that's a plus mm-hmm. so from a student perspective if you can navigate that system you're gonna do great but the system was very difficult. The demerit system. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. See, you Wait. see that look? You see that look in your face, man? <laughs> Even, uh, thankfully, I wasn't there when they used to you they they used to make students pay the five dollar fee for the, the detention. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't yeah. The, there, the, but yeah, yeah. The detentions, the demerits, man. And then as a teacher, if you if you didn't give a demerit, you would get a demerit. You know what I mean? So I, my personality just didn't fit very well in the punitive system. Mm-hmm. And so, and I know, I know our DRW, DRW is majorly African-American. And uh, I just know those students just had a really hard time with the demerits, man. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm sure, um, yeah. I mean, yeah, even, just get, even here with us, I mean, like, it was a mixture, but like. Yeah. You forget your ID, you get a demerit, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You got the hat on the building, you get a demerit, you, you. Mm-hmm. You, you drop your pencil and stand up. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything. Yeah. You drop the pencil, the mirror, right? Yep, there. yep, everything, exactly. Literally. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> if you speak without raising your hand, you get a demerit, man. Yeah. So uh I just wasn't good at that part of it. You know what I mean? But uh so it was just stressful. But I love the kids, man. I still got great relationships. I got great relationships. You know, I taught for over 10 years, man. So I got great relationships with all my students. But all even right. at the DRW, man, I think they uh, you know, they enjoy having me there. That's crazy, uh, especially knowing that you are a noble teacher. Uh, I actually had an episode with my uh, advisor. Oh yeah, I, yeah. When I first barely began my podcast, uh huh, he was like one of my first few people I I I invited to the pod, and I told him like pop out, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up, man. I haven't talked to yeah, I didn't talk to him like like Did he smoke with you? No, 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 no. (laughs) (laughs) No, I did tell him. No, 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 no. (laughs) No, but I'm not I I wonder if you ever met him. Did you you know any other advisors out of like teachers from Noble School or not? Man, you know what? Like I said, I was there for one year. Oh, and um It was crazy too, man. I was like the second oldest person in the building, man. All the teachers, man. I have never taught in my life where I was been old. You know, you got teachers been there 30, 40 years. It's such a new school. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and they had a lot of new young hires, man. So, you know, it was just a it was a wild experience, man, for me. Yeah. But I tried, man. Like yeah. I, you know. Um But other other than uh the noble school, that that was it. Other like teaching here in Illinois. Chicago, yeah. Oh man, my first teaching job ever when I first graduated uh was at Austin High School. Are you familiar with Austin High School? No, is this in, is it in the city? I see, yeah, it's on the west side too, man. So I need, I need to search that up. Huh? Yeah, Austin High School, bro. Austin it was uh, it was tough, man. Put it like this: I started off as a substitute, mm-hmm. and then when you're a substitute for Chicago Public Schools, you call in every morning like a hotline, and you register, and they send you to different schools every morning. So they might send you to the north side, they might send you to the south side, they might send you to the west side. So every day you just drive on the day of. Yeah, on the day of. So imagine Damn. I'm in the south suburbs and they's like, Yeah, you gotta go to school on the north side. And and school started at 720 or 820 or whatever. You know what I mean? So you know you gotta break, break out and get out there. So one day they sent me to Austin High School. Right? right so here? I was 
Yeah, that's it, man. Yeah, yeah. That's Austin High School. I'm not even sure if it's still open. I think it is, though. I think they changed the name. It just says Austin uh, College and Career Academy High School. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, they changed it, man. Austin so Pine Avenue. So let me let me tell you, man. Uh -huh. I go, I get to Austin High School. And uh and so I, I do my first day. You know what I'm saying? I'm familiar. Like I said, I graduated from Oak Park, so that's like a few blocks away. Okay. And um and at the end of the day, I see the principal and I'm like, hey, you know, uh I had a great day. I hope everything went well. She's like, Yeah, everything went well. Um uh and she just mentioned that there was like 22 vacancies. I mean, it was 22 teaching positions that weren't filled. You see what I'm saying? 22? Exactly. 22. Exactly. Huh. So I said, Well, teaching. <laughs> exactly. They, they're just bringing in random substitutes every day. So I said, uh, Well, how about this? Instead of me driving everywhere, why don't you give me a schedule? And I just come here and teach, and I teach here all year. Mm -hmm. She was like, Back. So she signed me up. I was teaching um, freshman algebra, first period. Okay. I was teaching sophomore geography. I mean, a geometry. Mm -hmm. I took. I taught a, a botany class. I just had a random schedule, man. But I, but I taught those classes all year. So that was my first teaching job, man. Ooh, how was that for you? Was it like how was the how was that like like overall? <laughs> man, dude, you gotta understand, dude. It's like. Man, you know, when you in a, a high needs area, man, it is crazy. You got to, we had metal detectors. Uh -oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. I had, man, I was so young too, bro. I had a Rockefeller jacket <laughs> and a book bag. Uh -huh. And I was, I was a teacher, man. I would try to go, they used to stop me every morning, man. Like, hey, man, you got to go through the metal detectors and all that stuff. But I had to remind them every day I'm a teacher. Um, but um, go to the metal detectors, man, go to class. And so put it like this, bro. You got a freshman class of 42 people. People sitting on the windowsill, 42, bro. People sitting on the windowsills, you know what I'm saying? Now, now, once you get to sophomore, it'd be like 28 people. And then we get to juniors, it'd be like 15. And we had seniors, it'd be like seven. So I had a class of like seven people, man. Then now, now, because I just, you know, you know, just people dropping out, man. Just being, yeah. you know, being in the in the in the neighborhood, man, and it's not necessarily having a, a full value to school. But the but once again, very similar to DRW. When you make it through the system, it's like the pressure of school created uh some beautiful, beautiful diamonds, man. So when people graduated from Austin High School, you talking about people who were dealing with crazy obstacles, but just fought through it and it just had refined that character so you're dealing with a 17 18 year old who was super mature who's taking care of their little brothers and sisters still killing school working doing whatever they can and just having that gate so when somebody was missed work or missed school i mean i'm sorry when somebody was missed school or missing an assignment man i had to ease up like man i understand you know what i'm saying just get it you know hit it hit me with it later because i understood so was that um, with like every teacher though out there Man, everybody had um everybody had different philosophies when it came to teaching. We had this one guy though. I mean, this the the most incredible teacher I have ever met in my life. Taught at Austin High School. Mm -hmm. His name was Mr. Mack, and uh, he was just no nonsense, super strict, super high uh, standards, and uh, and just crazy respect. So like. It, just imagine being in like World War Three, and you go to his class. It's like a beautiful serenity garden, and so the same kids would go out and just wild other people's class. But in his class, they had so much respect for him that they stood there, they came prepared, they brought their pencils, they had their homework done. Mm -hmm. He didn't care what the circumstance was, and I admired that. I just wasn't as seasoned as him to kind of create that kind of classroom. But man, he man, he was phenomenal, man. And so he, I would go to his class and see what he was doing, and it just just imitate that throughout my day. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah, he was in the crowd. You know, I, what, was I never... like, what was like his technique, you can say, to, to get to these kids? Just like a hardcore love. Just, just imagine like a really calm, extremely firm coach, like a Bill Belichick or, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, something like a coach that's just like, I never really seen him yell. You never seen him out of pocket. He lived in that neighborhood. He used to walk to school. He moved over there specifically to be in the neighborhood. He would go, if you missing school, he would walk to your parents' house. Really? You see what I'm saying? He was that kind of guy, man. Everybody know him, man. He had little kids and everything, man. And so 
he it was just a uh just a this is i talked for like i said i talked for over 10 years man and he was just one of he was one of one that's crazy yep. that's what's yeah. that's that's dedication right there you know yeah like, man to not let let these kids down because like yeah. you said first you're dealing with like what 42 you said yeah Damn, that's, freshman like class. Whole, that's like a whole like university, you know, <laughs> yeah. lecture yeah, hall. <laughs> exactly, a lecture hall, exactly. Of oh, of, uh, of fourteen year olds, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I could, yeah. I could most. I was, shit, I was, we were fourteen. Shit, I most definitely remember I was, I was acting fourteen. <laughs> yep, exactly. So just imagine forty two of you in one classroom, man. Yeah, no, that's crazy though. But yeah. yeah. I still I feel like with teachers I feel like there's there's not a lot of, I I feel like there's not there's no I don't want to say it. I'm not trying to like say talk down on teachers but I feel like like some really like pull through people's like kids bullshit like like I yeah. just don't know how some like some like some can you know like some like even for students like like some of the like some students would pro- do probably feel bad for teachers that have to deal with somebody's bullshit you know like all the time or something you know like, yeah. Yeah, like yeah, you know, and I, I don't have kids at the time too, man. Mm-hmm. You know, I bet you, like, you know, teachers who are parents have it even more, just that extra experience, that extra insight. But uh, it's hard; it's a hard job, man. And it, and and uh, teachers, you know, they do well. And you know, and another thing I learned too is that it's it's all different types of people, right? Mm-hmm. So, say if I had a class of thirty. It'd be like five or six, seven students just really gravitate to me. They just really enjoy my class, enjoy history, enjoy hanging out. You know what I'm saying? After you know, like around after school or whatever, you know, doing homework, coming in, do study hall. You know what I'm saying? They, just, but but that's just my personality. But then you have another teacher who's completely different. They will attract another set of students that they connect with. You know what I'm saying? So it really does take a village. You know what I mean? So it really does take a village. Um, and then, like you say, that, that that one teacher that is super mean that nobody likes, they the ones that get these kids ready for college, the best. You see what I'm saying? So everybody has a role in the school system, man. As long as people are doing it for love, because mm-hmm. um, that's the only motivation. If you're a teacher, you ain't doing it for you ain't trying to get rich, you know. So um, and the, here's the yeah, the, here's the thing. Also, like, what, what what do you think on all that? Especially the, especially like um like with the CPS uh system, you know, like. Because as a student as well, I remember there was a, t- a lot of times where, you know, teachers were on strike. Of course, you know, teachers don't get a lot of credit of the work they do. And, and of course, the pay isn't, you know, enough for these teachers. What What's your input on that, you know? Man, okay. So, you know, I try not to be too controversial with stuff because I don't know. I, You know, um, the politics behind education is tricky. And, uh, and I'm, I am not you know, super duper educated on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just somebody who ponders these things. And so I know how much we spend per child in Chicago, in America, you know, and I, and I see the results that we're getting. Can, can you give us uh, some numbers? Well, or? I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know the specific numbers uh-huh. because it changes, but let's just imagine, let's just, for example, Let's just say we spend a ten thousand dollars a year per kid in education, right? But it, you know, and then we get these results. But then you look in other countries, and they may be spending four thousand or five thousand dollars per kid, and and getting more efficient results. You mm-hmm. see what I'm saying? So, so, so is the answer more money? Sometimes, and it may be. It's like I said, it's complicated. You know what I mean? Now, one thing that I never, here's what you don't hear people do. And here's what I hate. I actually hate this. You know how they say, oh man, look at China and look at Japan and look at Korea and look at all these places where their math scores are so high. Look at the, you know, these the African students around the world. You know, America's testing 22nd in the world in mathematics and 17th in the world in English, right? You know, you know, and they try to make American education look bad because of our test scores are not as low. Here's the caveat to that. Here's why that is a, is a terrible argument. Because in those countries, they are only learning math and science. They barely learn in history. They definitely not learning any extracurricular things or creativity like art and music and band. You know what I'm saying? So in America, we might have less test scores, but we have more innovators. 
So you can have your, your super high math scores, but the person over here is the one inventing the iPhone. You know what I'm saying? And we're hiring the high math scores to be the manufacturers. You know what I'm saying? So we have to value the creativity and the creative mind in education. And you, and and that don't make the headlines. It's a great headline to say, oh, America, you know, since COVID, you know, American schools, mathematics have dropped X amount. And there's some value to that, but that's just a headline to try to sell newspapers and to create fear. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The power that that our education system should continually focus on tapping in is the creative power, the innovators. Yeah. That, that, what you think about what you think about that, man? That that that's that's what I like that because that's that's kind of true, and then and then that's kind of like behind the scenes of what really is going on, and and I think that's like another certain way to think of it, you know, like yeah. At the end of the day, I feel like shouldn't the creativity be for everybody you know like like although yeah. although you know how you said all these other countries and, and stuff are just focusing on, and studying on one thing like of course they i think they should still have some time left for creativity minds but like at the end of the day i think as well we have everything that they don't mm -hmm. you know like like uh, like so for other countries or whatever you know maybe by their laws or their rules or whatever they go by that don't allow what we can you know mm -hmm. and yep. then at the end of the day it's like what 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 outcome is it like for them i feel like if if they just continue and and, and study and and know if they can get these high scores they can eventually have a better life for them and within where us is like we really don't care at the at the moment because we're kids we all we care about is hanging out with our friends so you know playing video games doing whatever we like to do you know yeah, yeah. Or we leave out that homework, all that study at the end, or we wake up early as fuck, copy somebody's homework, you know? Because that was me, <laughs> yeah, bro. I that remember was me that, too. Was, that me, was me, bro. Too. Yeah. So, so it's 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 like I feel like at the end of the day, it's it's all our choices, and majority of of I think people here in America is that we tend to, like, we tend to pay that that for for not I guess going through the system or, or paying attention, you feel me? Like we end yeah. up, you know, being yeah. in debt, you know, or even trying to, it's hard to, you know, find a job or, you know, it, yeah. it, it's problem after problem after problem, you know, but yeah. again, it, it, we just got to pull through it. And at the end of the day, it's like, it's, it's us who, who decides if we make it through or not, man. Yeah, man. Yep. You got to pick your path, man. You know, um, that's how I picked it. You know, I'm, just, I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be a producer and not a consumer, mm -hmm. right? So I'm trying to produce a product, you know, ice cream. You know what I'm saying? It just, it just, it just became a talent of mine. I kind of wish, um, you know, I had some other kind of, you know, skills. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. far as like, you know, um, you know, food. You know, you know, food industry is is tough. But if you if you a great cook, you're a great cook. You know what I mean? If you if you great with dessert, you great great dessert. So that's kind of my realm, and so I'm trying to make the most of it. You know, but um, but you're right, man. It's you know, it's tough. It's tough out here for everybody in the world. Um, so it's hard for us to complain in America, but at the same time, we can't be like, man, how can things be better? So um, and I think I think COVID just completely changed everybody's mind too. I mean, like I remember when we were just barely getting out of the pandemic. Uh, you know, again, not a lot of people wanted to work, you know, anymore. They were just yeah. wanting to just be home and. It's like it's not really the move, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, man. Exactly. It's not really the move. So and, what, what? What? Oh, go ahead. Uh, no. What were you gonna say? So what do you think about universal income? I'm. I'm. Here's the thing. I feel like with all that, I need to know a little more. So I feel like you can give me more details on, on like that type of stuff. Man, you better pay attention, man. Yeah, you I, better gotta, pay I gotta attention. take notes. I gotta take yeah, notes. Gotta pay, I, I ain't saying I got the answers. No, but no. The, but the idea, the idea of universal income, bro. And you gotta watch like what Amazon and all these big companies are doing. The idea of universal income is this, especially with AI, right? AI coming, robots, all that stuff. It's coming. So the idea of universal income is everybody in America get a flat income per person, even children. All right, everybody. So if you got a household of seven, you get eight, you get seven checks, whatever. You know what I'm saying? Everybody gets a. <laughs> let's just for for argument's sake say a thousand dollars, right? Yeah. So everybody get a thousand dollars. 
a month. If you got five kids, you get five thousand dollars a month, right? I don't know. I'm just and I'm I'm just making yeah, it up. Yeah, let's just put numbers out there. Right. So so now, if you have a skill set that allows you to make additional income, good for you, right? So let's just say you're a DJ or you're a caterer and you're able to go out and hustle and make more, you know, man, whatever. Or you might even have a job, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but everybody gets this universal income. And so the way we the way we make that happen is we tax the big corporations like Amazon, right? So let's just use Amazon, for example. So everybody's at home. Nobody has a job. Mm-hmm. Or very few people have a job. Right. But you get a, a, a income from the government. Then you buy the things you need from Amazon. Right. You buy, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you got Hulu TV, you buy your toiletries, you buy everything with food. Everything comes from these companies. Thing. Yeah. That they ship in. Yeah. And then, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then the government tax Amazon heavy. Right. So that money goes to the government and the government redistributes them out to people. So that and so the goal is so the so the, the, the argument of that is, is if it's going to finally free humanity from these monotonous jobs in the industrial revolution type of society and so now you can go out and just be yourself and do the things you love to do the other side of it is man you basically become a slave to the government right because now they determine who get money and who don't get money you know what i'm saying so i don't know it's just pros and cons so that's why i was kind of wondering what you thought about it but it's coming you think you think it's coming man like you or said you, it you started with it... covid it uh, people were saying this before covid happened right i, I think i think it was i think it it, it... It planned before COVID. Everything that it is supposed to happen now and that happened during COVID was planned right before COVID. COVID was the main event. Mm-hmm. All the people who knew would just laid back and enjoy the popcorn, and enjoy all these, you know, enjoy the fucking movie. Mm-hmm. Now we're post post pandemic, we're post COVID, and you know we we don't know how to act anymore. Mm-hmm. And the way that you're saying about universal um, income, income yeah. yeah. Of course, the majority, I think majority now, everyone's going to relate to, you know what, fuck working. Let me get that money from the government because, you know what, I guess based on everybody, I think we all know government. the government lies. What's the least they can do? Yeah, spare us some money, you know, let us fucking just chill back and sure, why not? And, you know, do what we love to do. Yeah, but but at the end of the day, like how you said, yeah, he, what if the government one day does decide just we ain't gonna get in shit no more? Then what? Yeah, and then yep. and then and then although yeah, jobs or 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 you yeah. said oh you said this or you posted this, that's in violation. That's a demerit. You gonna demerit your money? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, you see what I'm saying? It's very authoritarian. Yeah. I'm gonna get a hell of detentions, <laughs> man, bro. Hey, for this exactly. podcast episode, <laughs> no, but I, it's, here's the thing about now that you mentioned about it, it's coming. Uh, did Did you see the movie on Netflix? Uh, Leave the world behind. Yeah, I did, man. What you did. think on that? What you think on that? Man, Especially man. now that you're knowing that you're a history teacher, what do you think on that? Man, it was heavy. Okay, I went through three. I went through several phases as I watched the movie. The first time, the first thing I was watching the movie, I was really interested in the story. Mm-hmm. I, I was loving the video shots, the camera work. I'm thinking like the camera work, man, the music, the sounds. I'm like, the, the, the dialogue is not creating any kind of tension or urgency, but the music is and the visuals and all of that stuff. So that was the first thing I was kind of, I was just kind of impressed with the movie ma- making part. Then the second part, um, like, man, you know, like everybody was like, man, is this realistic? You know, like, what's going on, man? Is this realistic? Um, I thought I had some, you know, when dude, I don't know if anybody can see the movie, but when dude's teeth fell out, I was like, oh, man, some supernatural stuff. Going. I didn't know if Alias is coming. I didn't know what was going on. Yeah. Um, So I had, you know, so I had some opinions. But then at the end, I found out, you know, Barack Obama, like, executive yeah, produced the movie, bro. And I was he like, did. oh. Once I yeah. found out, that, okay, so <laughs> so the only reason why I watched it was because I found out that Barack Obama was part of it, and I was like, "What the fuck? Like, dude, what is he? What's he doing? Huh? What is, is he? Yeah. He's doing something? You think is he? Is Man, he, um, you think that at us that something's gonna happen? Well, okay, so it's based on a book, right? So the premise of the story is already based on a book, so it's not his ideas. But then there's a director who turned that book or whatever, they turned the book into a script. So his role was to take the new script and help it be more realistic with his experience. 
So, so the stuff that you see, mm -hmm. his job was to tweak it of what would really happen with society based on his experience as president. As as his pre president. Yeah, yeah, and politics. So he got all the background understanding. So now it makes the movie that much more realistic. You know what I'm saying? And well, think about actually, the messages that they were putting in that movie. They were, yeah. and especially especially with the Teslas. Mm. That. Yeah, 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 and yeah. you know how, how a lot of accidents are happening with the Teslas, you know, driving yep. by themselves. And... Yep. Exactly, man. Then the leaflets falling down, and you don't know you know who is it from and it's just uh it's just causing confusion did you um, like the did you like the the tension between uh what was it um what, what was the guy's name what's what's blade's real name uh, 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 ali, uh yeah Mashallah yeah Marshall ali, ali yeah and, yeah uh, was it emma was it emma roberts julia roberts julia, julia roberts, roberts there you go yeah did you like yeah. did you like the tension or whatever i on, did on? man i did i think that um yeah, it, you know, it definitely added a great element. And then they hit you with the tension between the, the other husband, too. yeah, yeah, and the daughter, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so, uh, oh, I like ahead. how I like how how the girl said to the dad, you don't trust white people. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Why would you say that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But right. but it makes sense though. Like in a situation like that, like like because I can like, even if if, if if it's if it's not like a black person, I think even if it, from a Hispanic person point of view, yeah, like even you wouldn't even trust. It. Not not saying if it's if it's a let's say in this case scenario, the person could not the father family isn't white or white or not. Let's say it could be any fuck any race. Yeah, I feel like in that in that scenario, I think you still wouldn't trust the the other family if it was up to you yeah. and your kid. You feel me? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think um, and that's true, um. I think what they were doing were kind of peeling the covers off of how people really think. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I can imagine there are people in the Black community that'd be like, they, you know, would just be untrusting of a family because they're white, just like the white let me let me tell you something. Let me tell you mm -hmm. something. Did you know Denzel Washington was supposed to be in that movie? No. Man, Google it, man. Really? Denzel, yeah. Listen, listen. Denzel Washington has signed on to do that script. And, the one that uh, Masha, uh, yeah, Ali did? yeah, yeah, Mashallah Ali. Yeah. Uh -huh. So what happened was he got called for Equalizer three, so he had to turn the role down. And so. So now, here's why they say the movie is better with Marshala Ali. Uh -huh. Because Denzel Washington is so common to us, we would have immediately trusted him. We wouldn't have assumed he was playing a role of a bad guy. But Marshal Ali, he was so mysterious, he we never really knew was he good or bad. You know what I'm saying? And that just really helped boost the movie. So I think the movie was better with Marshal Ali than it would have been with Denzel Washington. Because we would have just assumed Denzel Washington was a good guy. That's true, uh, because the way he kind of, you know, represented himself and talking about the wallet, he left it because yeah, walking down the stairs, like in the hotel room or something about walking down the stairs. Yep. Uh, Did it come up? Did say Washington supposed to be in the... Uh, uh, let me see. Hold on. Let me see. So you can see. Uh, that's crazy. I heard them talk. They was discussing this aspect on the um on a podcast. And uh, and they said that uh, he um, had to leave. Uh, see, look, yeah. Click on that first thing. Why did Denzel Washington leave? Okay, the part of the... See. Reasons Washington departed from this was not disclosed, but was portable explanation could be scheduled conflict to another production. Mm, yeah. Makes sense. See? Yeah. So he was supposed to be in it, man. I think that's probably just the, the, the why, you know. I think that it should be a little deeper. You don't think there's a little deeper meaning to it? Uh, the movie? No, why he left. Uh oh Man, he, he probably saw that script, bro. He said he didn't want to have nothing to do with it. I don't, <laughs> I don't know, probably, man. Probably, right, from all the controversial and all the theories now that, that people, yeah. I mean, right away, I mean. But I feel like the movie is, is really realistic, like you said, because of how it could happen. Yeah. And it's by getting hacked. Yeah. Yeah. Which is crazy. And, 
And what's even more crazy was how Marshall Lee was talking about how he kind of saw it coming because of the the elite relationships, the, the, the relationships he had with the, the rich elite people, mm -hmm. and how these guys are building bunkers and, uh, you know what I'm saying, and, yes. and moving money around. You know what I'm saying? They knew it was, they knew that stuff was coming, man. I have I have two uh, two points. One, I don't understand the whole deer situation within the movie. Yeah, I that's I a good point. I don't, I don't I, know. Me either, me either, me either, Okay, man. and then two, it's crazy. It's funny because I think it's funny because, like, if you think about it, like, if, around the movie, it dropped, and if you've seen the movie, you've seen it, but then you hear Mug Slugerberg is doing a bunker, uh, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then you got Rick Ross doing one now, too. Yeah. So, like, what's going on, you know? Like, I don't know. You got, you I can know, tell you, uh -huh. I never believed the Mark Zuckerberg bunker story. I didn't oh. believe it. What do you mean? Like, like what story? They say Mark Zuckerberg is building a bunker, a, a multi-million dollar bunker in Hawaii. First of all, if you was building a bunker, hmm. would you let people know where it was? And would you even let people know you had it? You know what I'm saying? He probably got a bunker. He probably been had a bunker 15 years ago. And it, it definitely ain't in Hawaii. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you get what I'm saying? Like, think about yeah, it. The whole like point of having a bunker is a secret getaway. So how did how did it get out that he got a bunker in Hawaii? Would you go? They will give it the address too. No, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how, how you were saying it right now because it just reminded me how remember Oreo has like uh dropped that advertisement of the long longitude and latitude of the Oreo bunker. Oh yeah, yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, <it is. laughs> now, those people do want to know where. where yeah. <laughs> they want us to know where's that. <laughs> yep, yep, exactly, dude. That is funny. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, I don't know. I mean, what's your intake on on you know Elon Musk and wow. Tesla and, and SpaceX? Man. Man, that's a hard question, man. Well, does he? What does he, is he? Does he know what what he's talking about? Man, I believe so. Well, first of all, uh, I'm reading this book, the new one. You know, I, you got a couple of uh, biographies. Uh, and so this one is by, uh, I think, Walter Jacobson. And uh, that guy is like the premier biographer, right? So, you know, he wrote the Abraham Lincoln biography. He wrote the, I mean, the Benjamin Franklin one, the Albert Einstein one. You know what I'm saying? So, like, for him to do a biography on you, you got to kind of be at the pinnacle. Um, so I'm reading a book. Is he Here's a good the author, thing. By the way, sorry. Is he good? Yeah, author? man, he's phenomenal, man. He's phenomenal because he's painting a picture from everybody in Elon Musk's uh, life to kind of get a, a more accurate view. Um, so yeah, I think he did a good job. But at the same time, bro, it's a, it's still a biography, man. So you don't know what you're reading and how accurate it is or what they what the tilt on it. So you know, you you just gotta have an open mind mm -hmm. to not just accept everything you read, but also not discredit everything you read. You just gotta be fluid in your understanding so um here's here's what i uh really admire about elon musk you know especially from a business person right man you know i love steve jobs and i mean i can say i love him. i mean i love learning about steve jobs and mark zuckerberg all of the great titans you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. the difference i think that elon musk is 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 his work He's not yelling at, well, he's yelling at employees, but he's not yelling at employees to do this and do that. He is, when he yelled at the employees and the employees can't do it, he goes and do it himself. He's screwing in stuff on the rocket ship. He's building things on the test. He's fixing problems that all of these people. So he is, when I say brilliant, he's absolutely brilliant. Um, and then it's kind of like he talks from a perspective of humanity. Mm -hmm. Right. So, hey, my, you know, so it feels like it feels like he has a genuine interest in doing what's best for humanity over everything, not economics, not, you know, because a lot of people, his number of criticism is he makes bad business decisions to get things done. You know what I'm saying? But in the process, he's made billions of billions, despite what everybody said. You know, it's been a ton of people. I'm not investing. In, that's a stupid idea. You can't never make money. That kind of thing. So so he brings this like this this amazing entrepreneurial spirit that everybody can admire. Now, the, the hard part about it is uh, he's gotten more and more political. You know, he has more and more, um, you know, he's gotten more and more, um, you know, he's just kind of a free spirit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know what I mean? He just say things that is very, very divisive at times. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, so it's like, you know, 
it's like everybody, bro. People, you, you can't hold nobody up as idols, right? You can just admire what they bring to the table, um, imitate what they do well. Um, this, this, this is my coaching mentality, right? We work, work with a lot of coaches. Man, you work with some great coaches. You imitate what they do well, and then you change, you, you know, what you what you can improve upon. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, it's just, you know, he just he just putting everybody, you know, it's like Kanye. I'm a, you know, it's like Kanye West, man. It's like... So many well, great Kanye, Kanye bro. Yeah, I'm bro. A Kanye fan. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Kanye fan. I'm a huge Kanye fan, man. Oh, so bro. he's my inspiration, low key. Man, dude, I'm a, I'm a huge Kanye fan, bro. Well, it's hard to say that. Like, I, I was nervous about saying that out loud in public, bro. It's like, oh, no, hell yeah, no. Don't, 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 don't be scared. Don't be scared. I'll say it hey, with you, bro. too. Yeah, yeah, you know we love saying? Kanye and we proud of him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you yeah. got to admit that being a Kanye fan is tough because some of the things he do and say um you know it, it's hard to get fully behind it you know what i'm saying now if you're a real kind of fan you understand him as a person you 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 kind of seeing his process you know what i'm saying but to explain it to people take day you be trying to explain why kanye said this and why he did that they don't want to hear that you know what i'm saying yeah so um so you know so but so elon musk is man it's so similar bro what you think on on Elon, yeah, he's he's one of a kind. That's for sure. I I, I feel like you just have to be. I'm not saying that if you don't understand him, you're you're slow or or dumb. But I feel like I feel like at some point I I wouldn't even understand what he's talking about. But I I feel like you just have to like one be open minded, two try to try to see like like why he's doing it or or try to see like try to pick his brain out that i, I feel like I, that's what i would do if i were to like talk mm-hmm. to him or whatever mm-hmm. but like understand him although it'll be hard for sure i feel like it'll be difficult to understand him but he okay so here's what he's missing because you can't get to the point where understanding what he's trying to say you can get there if you work at it mm-hmm. but Everybody's not going to work there, work at it. And so what he's missing is the empathy and the understanding. You know, like, for example, you know, he's trying to, you know, his big thing right now is, in, you know, diversity and inclusion in the workplace. And you can academically understand what he's saying and why he's saying it. But he's, but so in his academic explanation on why diversity and inclusion is wrong, right, he's missing the hurt and harm and the shortcomings of not having diversity and inclusion or not, you know what I'm saying? Not mandating it because when well, you don't mandate it, it sounds good in a textbook that you just hire the best person. Man, it's Black History Month, bro. We can go down right now and talk about the best person for the job and you'll find out most of people were slaves. The slaves were smarter than the inventors. You see what I'm saying? So it's a we got we got 400 years of the best person for the job not getting the job. So now for you to come in 2024 and say, oh, uh, well, let's just hire the best person for the job. And if he white, he white. If he black, he black. But let's just mm-hmm. do that. But we can't trust that system. We've been the best person for the job forever. We've been inventing the light stop light bulbs, stop signs, radios, TVs. Anything you can think of, man, we can go down and talk about black history and what black people invented and not getting credit for, you know what I'm saying, and not pay for. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Man, I saw something on the internet the other day. It just made me think. Think about this. Mark Zuckerberg had the, you know, came up with the software of Facebook and Meta, and he a multi-billionaire. Steve Jobs, you know what I'm saying, led Apple. And, and created all the touchscreen and all this stuff, and he's a multi-billionaire. Elon Musk, electric cars and space, SpaceX and all this stuff, he's a billionaire. And there's a black woman who invented GPS and a software for GPS, and she's just a regular person. Yeah. How come she's not a billionaire? Every satellite in the sky is in the sky because of her mathematics. A black woman. And we just celebrate her. Oh, man, look, a black woman created GPS. Where's the financial empire that she's supposed to get like everybody else get. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's hard when you say, oh, you got to end woke. I understand the academic argument of wokeness and diversity and inclusion, all these things that they talk about. You know what I'm saying? But there's an empathy and an understanding that also goes with it. 
You see what I'm saying? So, you know, anyway. No, yeah, I think that that the, I, I totally un, I, uh, try, I am understanding. Did you know that, man? Did you know a black woman invented the, the, the math? No, I was, did not know yeah, that. Yeah, I didn't know yeah. that. <laughs> Holy yep. shit. Yeah. Uh, um, I feel like everybody gets surprised when they find out that Elon Musk is from um from South is it from South Africa, right? Yep, South Africa. Yep. Yeah, yep. everyone gets surprised too. Yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. everyone thinks he's white because of his skin. I'm like, where? I'm like, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he's definitely you know European descent. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You know South Africa. You know, and then the crazy another thing too is they he grew up doing apartheid. So you gotta understand. You know, you know the part. Are you familiar with apartheid? No. Yeah, man, that was like the it's like the Jim Crow law is you know Jim Crow is like you yeah, know black yeah, skin drink. It was like that in South Africa. Um, oh, okay. I don't want to say it worse or better, but it was a it was just a whole set of laws, legal laws that 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 um that kept uh black people suppressed in South Africa. Oh, and so that's why Nelson Mandela was so important in world history because uh, he helped lead uh, the the fall of apartheid. Oh. You know what I mean. So he kind of like help him help change laws out there and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Remember he went to jail and all of that stuff. Yeah, man. Um. So uh, you know, um. I don't want to. He he played a big role. He went to jail and he basically a political prisoner for years and years and years. And then uh, when they freed him and they and they overthrew apartheid and had a dem a democratic vote, he he became the president. He won. Oh wow! And instead of punishing all the white people who put him in jail and, you know, send, you know, and, and, and held down all the, you know, the crimes against humanity in South Africa. Mm -hmm. He didn't, he chose not to, he chose to forgive. Oh, wow. That's a major respect. Yeah, man. Major respect. But uh, low key, I have another question going to yeah. Elon just yeah. based on like what he's, how, what he said, uh, I'm not sure if you, have you ever heard of the pod where he went on with, with Joe Rogan? Yeah. what he say? Uh, that he mentioned about, uh, all this being a simulation and stuff like that. What, what, what you think on on that? Like, what, what you think is, is is this really a simulation? Like, damn, bro. Or or I what? Think about it, <laughs> I think about it. I think about it every day, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, you know, I try to I try to play that game in my mind and, and feel like you know it's a video game and I'm the main character try to you know manifest positivity and all these things and try to take advantage of the of, of that possibility mm -hmm. um man is you know yeah i get you and get kind of rid it out because you think about it like okay so we can have pet fish right and we put the fish in the tank and we just watch them for our personal enjoyment right but in that fish tank it might be a whole world you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That they processing it or ants, right? You watch your ants and we just see ants, you know? Um, and then and then I break it down as far as like um cellular structure, right? So in our cells, we have mitochondria, you got different things going on, cells and stuff. And they might be living, you know, in bacteria and living organisms, community in our body. So I just think it just multiplies out from from molecular level to you know, and they can keep going. And then you think about the universe. When you look at the universe, the universe is like a whole bunch of molecules. And they say this, oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, billions and billions of galaxies in our universe. And the universe is ever expanding. It might be um, even more so expanding. So I'm like, man, it could be, we could be in a, in a, in a matrix, man. We could just be in a, and our Earth could just be one molecule and we just little molecules in that molecule i don't know bro it get it, it, you know it get heavy the thought process get heavy it but it, we we definitely can't be in a simulation man is it like what what is like the endless possible uh percentage or like like, like hey, if, man, you, if, hey. if, if, if let's say like um theoretically um hey man you ever okay T tell you tell me what is heaven See, yeah, and you, and you own your okay, not not, okay. not or like how not, I think of like how I picture it, or, or, or the general concept. Let's not use our personal ideas. Okay. What's the what, what what is the most commonly accepted version of heaven? Well, it's like you know clouds, you know the skies, the sun, angels, you know stuff like that. Like you know and how like, long like you clouds live and stuff like that forever. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. You live forever in the clouds and the heaven. Yeah. So how about this? So you know, you want to talk about simulation? Uh -huh. And our consciousness, 
And then they, Elon Musk is creating Neuralink and all these other companies are working on Neuralink and they want to put these chips in our head and eventually be able to upload our consciousness, right? And once you can upload your consciousness to the cloud, you'll be able to live forever. You see what I'm saying? Heaven could have, could be a, a data space of clouds that we get to, you upload your consciousness in, into the cloud. You know what I'm saying? And live forever. That's, the, that's what these people are working on every day. I want to be able to upload my consciousness into the cloud and live forever, bro. <laughs> he tweaking, yeah. he tweaking. <laughs> that's what they work. That's the goal. Everybody goes to get to heaven, right? You know nah, what I'm saying? Stop, they go. Stop talking, bro. Nah, I'm late. <laughs> nah, but you, you, you see, you got me thinking now. Holy shit. <laughs> nah, but I, I Man, know look that I, look I know it, that bro. I know that Elon Musk was working on on you know Neuro Neuralink and stuff. You know, I I was knowing that that. This dude was putting chips in, like so. You think you could get, you know, uh, track no or something, or like, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, right. It's some so, it, and I was like, holy shit, like I can't believe it's happening. That it's going to human trials, yeah, because it's. I feel like it. Uh, that's like a step closer to virtual reality as well. Like, like have you seen Black Mirror before? Like the, on Netflix. Man, I've seen some. I've seen some episode. I've seen oh, some. Okay, episodes. okay, okay, but. Okay, we'll get into into bit in, in that too, cause that's some fucked up shit. I don't know which ones yeah, you see, yeah, but that's yeah, some yeah. crazy shit. <laughs> it is, bro. It is, man. It is. But and, and the thing that make it crazy is, is we all we see the possibilities of the of it being real. Yeah, that's what that's what's scary. That's what makes it scary. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, that's that could happen. Yeah, exactly. It could fucking happen. Yeah, exactly. I, it's, it's um. It's a good segue. We'll get right. Fuck it. We'll just get into it right now. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure we'll get back into it later. But there's this episode in in uh, Black Mirror. I'm not sure if you've seen it, where it's the kid. I don't know if he's a kid or not, but uh, he he goes in and robs the bank. Yeah. At the end, he has to, right? Yeah, he has to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They they have the they have a picture of him, you know, doing yep. his thing, or whatever. Yeah. So at first, even like how he mentioned it. Um, I'm not sure if everyone's seen it or not, but if you haven't, whatever, fuck it. Um, so at first, in the way he th- thought this, because he told the dude that he got caught. What in my mind, first watching it, I'm like, oh, he just got caught watching porn or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. But like, let's. But at the end of the show, it turns out that he was, I guess, you know, watching, I guess, younger girls or whatever, yeah. because of the same as the rest of the guys. That was that was just mind fucked me. Yeah, was, man. What the fuck? <laughs> Yep. Yep. And for a split minute, I thought he was like the one to, you know, be free and the one last surviving at the end. And yeah. That was crazy, bro. So, <laughs> so, okay. What I remember is he had to fight the other guy to the he death. Did. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. He did. So, then, what happened after that? Uh, I guess he was walking back home, like walking out of the woods. And uh-huh. then that's where he gets a phone from a phone call from his mom and his mom starts crying on the phone. Like, why? Why did you do this? And I guess at the same time as this happening, the cops arrives and that and he has the whole uh-huh. bag and it's the and then the cash has the tracer. So that's how they find out. Uh, that's how they track him down. I was like, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, I forgot. Yeah, yeah. I, I, so, I uh-huh. Yeah, go ahead. So I was like, damn, I was like. These people, whoever planned it, knew everything all along. Like that's why they they send everybody the meme, the meme. Yep, yep, yep. I'm gonna check it out again. I might actually watch that tonight, man. Uh, I, it's I crazy. Like that, bro. I feel like that has a deeper meaning to it. I don't know why. Yeah, I, I just have like that has a deeper meaning to it. Yeah, I got man. You know, and that's the thing with Black Mirror, man. I haven't watched all the episodes. I've seen that one. Okay, which I one? saw um the one with the likes. Like the so it was like a social media lifestyle and like oh yeah and her, her value kept dropping dude that yeah. was intense but man it just you know shows saying? how it just it just kind of shows it how like it is though like in reality like how yeah how people are really trying hard to be liked out in social media and all and and, and like I feel like at what at the end like she she just she looks all trashy and stuff like that <laughs> <laughs> yeah man. Uh, yeah, it's you, crazy, bro. You seen other ones? I seen uh uh striking viper, bro. That's like the probably the famous phase one, bro. Which one is that one again? The the video game one, man. When him and his uh boy were going to play the video game, 
Like it was like the the Street Fighter one. Oh yeah, yeah, no, that was weird. I, I don't understand that one at all. Yeah, man, it was wild, bro. It was that wild. one was weird. Yeah, that was wild, man. And at the end, um, I think the wife accepted it, but I think that was. They, like they, they get to play pass. one. Yeah, they get to play once a year. Something crazy, bro. Yeah, yeah that's weird. What, what, yep. what, any any thoughts on that? Nah, man, I ain't got no thoughts on that, bro. It was uncomfortable, man. It was uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I was like, what is going I had, on? I had a boss, man, and she was like, oh, man, you got... So they had this inside joke. Like, everybody in the office would always say, striking vipers, striking vipers. And they had this inside joke, and I just didn't get it. And she was like, man, you got to go watch this episode. You know what I'm saying? So I went home and watched it, man. I was like, all right, I get it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, bro. No, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, but I tried, you know, I tried to watch uh more episodes, man. But I, you know, I've been, I, I, I am getting, I get a chance to watch a lot of TV. No, but, that's, uh, that's cool. try to get it in. Yeah, uh, it's been a, a, minute, a while since I kind of mentioned a movie. Uh, it's because I, I, cause I was trying to also trying to get deep into it, but it's similar to the Leave the World Behind. But have you seen Don't Look Up? Yeah, I saw that a while ago too, man. Um, I feel like that I, movie I, was 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 published or was released at the perfect time as well. <laughs> yeah, man, you, you see what I'm saying? So, 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 think about it. All of these movies have been released at certain times. Do you know what's coming out this this spring? No, this movie called Civil War. I think I heard of it. I seen it on TikTok. Yeah, man, it looked real, bro. It's it's like Texas and California for some reason. They they did it on purpose to kind of make it a little less. But Texas and California goes to war with like the rest of the United States or something like that. So it's like a civil war, uh, and it comes out right before elections. Like you see what I'm saying? Don't yeah, man. The, the trailer looked crazy. I haven't seen it. You know what I'm saying? Trailer. Because the story, you know, like some family got to get from one point to the other point, and they got to go through these states, and so it's dangerous and uh, this one dude, like this, the one scene, like the family roll up on this guy. He got the gun, he, the AK forty seven, and he's like, "Where are you going? Stop right there!" And they're like, "Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on." You know, we Americans. Mm -hmm. He's like, "What kind of American?" You know. What I'm <laughs> 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 it's, it's crazy, like, bro. What kind of American? Yeah, what kind of American? <laughs> and so that's the trailer, man. But you know, but I'm saying like. Um, Man, why are they making this movie right now, right before these to, Trump I, elections? I you know what I'm saying? Trailer. I got to see the trailer. Yeah, it's, it's I, a good, it's a must see movie. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So, yeah. Um, okay. Um, but it's meant to be. You know, I don't know if it's foreshadowing anything, or is it meant to be divisive, or uh -huh. I don't know how it's going to end. But I just hate to. I, you know, I don't want a movie like that at this time in America. You know. But I'm gonna watch it. <laughs> I'll pay hey, my seventeen dollars. Yep, yep, exactly. Uh, did you ever see the movie called Greenlands? Is it Greenlands? What Greenlands. Yeah. Oh, what's that about? It's uh where it's like a, again another end of the world movie. Uh, mm -hmm. where you I forgot what's the main actor, but the main actor plays. I guess he's like a he's some part of the, the government or whatever, and they're at the time or whatever they're at a party with all their mm -hmm. friends or whatever. And he yeah. gets the message, and I guess at the same time he gets the message, everyone on TV sees this, like, I guess, broadcast news that's talking about that everyone got to, like, dip or something, like, seek shelter or whatever. Yeah. And then he, at the and he, like, reads or hears the voice message, whatever, talking about, like, they got to dip with his family, only his family, and to go to this location, because apparently the world's going to end or whatever. Yeah. Then, and if you receive this car, whatever, that means that you you're safe to go and stuff like that. So yeah. So the technique saying you have a safe haven to go to. Yeah. Pretty much. Then the the whole friends whatever freak out talking about at least take their kids or whatever and like they ignore them and they they just fly out they just go and and, and like the world starts to end. Then they get separated, but and like they lose their kids. The mom got to find the kid. Like it, it's it's intense. Like it's an intense yeah. movie. But yeah, it, I feel like, the, but watching that, I feel like that that's I feel like that's kind of true. Like like I feel like you know like government higher up, higher ups or even like celebrity like have some type of like you know escape no, plan. Like, yeah, if if the world yeah. was to like end or whatever, I feel like yeah. you know, they were to like leave humanity to like fuck themselves. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, th I mean, okay. I know, man. It's, it's crazy. Now I got a question. Uh -huh. What would be your plan 
if you had so much money, right, that you generated money, you saving money, you investing money, we talking about millions and millions, probably, you know, billions worth, you're a billionaire, you making X amount of million a day in interest, right? And so, you know, you're, you got, like, for example, I heard like Steven Spielberg, he got like a, when well, he sitting down with his uh, financial advisor, it's not like a 10 year plan. It's not, it's like a 150, 200 year plan on what mm -hmm. to do with my money. So when you got that kind of money, and you know, at, what, at some point, would you start working on like in the world kind of, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, I would. Honestly, yeah. I think, I think I'll be way more woke if I have that amount of capital. Cause yeah. You need a shit ton of capital, of course, to to you know have something built and all. Yeah. So, I, I one of course have like I I think I I want I'm not gonna say a lot, but I'll I'll start to make something and and start to storage something that I know can last long enough. Or yeah, you know, yeah, little by little. What will be your attitude versus towards the rest of humanity? So here's the thing. I I feel like I'm too I'm too of a nice guy. Mm -hmm. so i feel like if i eat i think everybody gotta eat yeah i think at that point i think that has to make come to a switch and it's like sure involve like my closest people or whatever but at, at a certain point I feel like at that same time it's like you gotta be careful because you never know maybe they're gonna out turn their backs on you you know yeah 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 and, yeah you know, not everyone you know bites the hand that they feed you know right right so and it happens. So you're right, man. So it goes like this. It goes um, self, family, community. You know what I'm saying? So if you get to the point, I guess if I would get to the point where I made sure I'll be taken care of in case of an emergency and I had a plan for my family to be taken care of in my emergency and I felt really good about that, then I'll spend the rest of the time on trying to make sure everybody else is taken care of. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. How can we use technology for farming or in you know a better emergency response right we got see see they say take they say ai is 50 50 it's either going to destroy humanity mm -hmm. or help us create a utopia they don't know it's 50 50 you know what i'm saying thing, yeah yeah but here's the thing how you mentioned you know how, you know like work with technology or how you know make technology help us but what if technology you know comes in and attacks us what what is that you know what what yeah. what if that happens then what yeah man i feel like I nowadays we're all dependent on it that we don't know how to you know survive out there <laughs> yeah i know i know that's what i'm saying so i don't know man how, i don't know that that's 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 the that's the that's the question right if you have all the resources in the world how do you figure out a way to help everybody and it's natural to want to help yourself mm -hmm. it's natural to want to take care of your family but a lot of people possibly stop there. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. how can you, um, you know, and, and definitely you don't want to be the sinister guy, right? The the evil villain that, oh, I'm going to make sure I need more money. So we're going to, you know, you know what I'm saying? Do the sinister things. Like, you know, all the conspiracy theories about these sinister guys who rich. Nobody want to be that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, um, but it gets tricky, man. It gets tricky really fast when it comes to helping people. So that's the thing you got to figure. That's the thing we got to figure out. I hope to be, you know, wealthy enough to be able to, be able to help a lot of people, you know? Well, okay, so what would you rather deal with? Uh, uh, like, uh, end of the world, a zombie acoplyphs, uh, or, mm -hmm. or like, a, a, like, let's say like a, a stronger and, and, yeah, like a stronger COVID, like, you know, like something that you need to, yeah. like, like, you need to, like some nuclear shit. What yeah, you, yeah. What would you rather? A zombie apocalypse, bro. See, the end of the world, you you can't beat that. If if God say, all right, it's Noah's Ark. It's Noah. We about to flood the earth for 48, 49. You go flood everything. It ain't nothing you could do. You know what I'm saying? So that's out. And then COVID, that's random. Like a, a virus, you got to deal with a virus. That's random. Now, the zombie apocalypse is terrible, but at least you got a fighting chance. You know what I'm saying? Give me a blade. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Like a, like a what's the name? Michonne? <laughs> give me a sword give me a football helmet and some pads <laughs> <laughs> and just you know yeah, coach. <laughs> yeah exactly exactly <laughs> you, you see what i'm saying you have a, probably a little bit more control over the zombie apocalypse than the other two uh, you think what that, you think you think you think that's that's like possible 
Nah, man, I don't believe in no reanimation, man. Because science, the thing about this, everything needs energy. Mm-hmm. Now, if you read the book, which book? um, what's the Will Smith movie? Which one? The zombie movie. Um, I am legend. Yeah, I am legend. Dude, I read the book. The book is completely different from the movie. Really? There's completely movie? different. There's a movie called I like based on the movie, or like a book based on the movie. Yeah, yeah. The book was written like in the nineteen fifties, man. Oh, uh, I think it. something like that. Yeah, I read the book, man. Okay. Um, now in the book, it's because because me, I never believed in zombies mm-hmm. because uh, we know you need to eat to get energy. And, you know, you have the zombie, they stomach all out. They're not digesting food. They're dead. So how can they still be animated? Well, this book actually explained how zombies, how these people are animated. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, want me to tell you? Yeah. Yeah, it's something about, uh, it was very scientific, but it's something about this specific bacteria that grows and it, and, and it eats and it generates the bacteria is what controls the zombie. And they ain't call them zombies in that book. But the bacteria is what controls the reanimation. Because the bacteria is like um infiltrated the uh the nervous system and all of that stuff and it's eating something inside. And that's you know, and I was like, okay, that was the best explanation I ever heard. Because other than that, I'm like, man, zombies can't never happen because it takes energy to move. You know what I'm saying? And where are they getting energy from? You know what I mean? Especially if your digestive system is not intact. You know. So, so, so it's like is that bacteria? So if, let's say, let's say if, if uh, so if I was dead and and I got that bacteria, then I would become one. You would get you. That, that would be the only way then. You could possibly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Possibly. Oh, okay. But yep. you see, I, well, I I feel like there's because a lot the, of the bacteria. In- <laughs> there's a yeah, lot of bacteria. Right. There's a lot of viruses. You don't think a virus, the virus? You don't think the virus could 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 cause a, a zombie? Man, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess the nervous system. You know what I'm saying? But I think I think it was like him, like a battery. At some point, you have to wear down, bro. Like run out of energy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We we'll run out of energy if we don't. You know what I'm saying? We don't eat. Yeah. Like you know, <laughs> nutrients. Like you be a zombie, but they're like, man, zombie, you low in vitamin C, mm. and and your uh your um calcium is low. You know, <laughs> to the zombies, man. So I don't know, bro. There's uh there's actually this uh this one movie I just recently saw, and like I said, when I was reading you the the docs, uh, I just really wanted to talk to talk about it more. Um, so there's two movies. Uh, one. They uh then those Washington's kid is in it. It's uh an Adam Driver. It's called I forgot. It's the uh, the create the creator the creator. Which one? The no, creator. no, not that. Not that not oh, that, oh, that okay, one. okay, okay. Uh, the the one is called uh, some say KKK Klansman something like that. Oh, the Black Klansman. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. The Klansman, Black Klansman. That one. Yeah. And then I just saw a recent one. I just finished it yesterday. It's called Skin. I watched it on HBO Max. Oh, okay, okay. So, so I'm, I'm gonna start off with the skin one first. Uh, and it's I guess to deal with like this, I guess this dude that's already in this, the, 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 the like a Nazi group or whatever, like he's all tatted up and all. Yeah. And like, I think he's at a point where he's just like wants to get out of it. Mm-hmm. And, and I just, and it just kind of shows like the whole entire movie just shows like him, like his struggles of like him trying to get out of like the group, you know? Yeah. And like how he kind of has to go through this program that's led by like this uh this black dude I forgot what's his name um he he has a, a big organization called uh be people or our people something like that okay. where it's like this organization where like it helps people that are like in these races groups and stuff like that like get yeah. out of it and stuff like that try to change their lives and stuff like that but like it it like this dude just had to go through it a lot man like yeah like how like these people like would just like follow him and stuff like that like he had to like uh, go through laser surgery to get all the uh tattoos, all the tattoos. Yeah. yeah and that like in order for them that for him to like get the tattoos removed like he would get like guaranteed like a job and like all like kind of like his ch- life change you know like a second yeah. chance yeah yeah and it's just crazy, you feel me? Like how how yeah, yeah. like how these groups are 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 still active and 
and they, I, I just kind of want to tag along with the with the, the other movie because like at the end of the movie, I'm not sure if you've seen it or not. Uh, I said, uh, the Black Testament, I have. Yeah, okay, because at the end, like how how it shows like uh like real life footage of like all these people. The two real guys, for real. Yeah, of like of like kind of recent history, how you you can say of these current events, you know, like of of these marches and people getting killed, which mm-hmm. is still crazy that we're still in in this day and era, and of course it's still I feel like sad to say it's never gonna end racism. But like it's again, it's still crazy that we still have these groups being active. Like what? Yeah, what? yeah, man. You know, it, it makes you think. Like, well, first of all, man, I, I think the human brain is very plastic, meaning like it grows and it shapes based on what it's exposed to. You know what I'm saying? So if you grow up around wolves and or bears, you go, your brain's gonna process that. If you grow up around racists, whatever, you know, so it's, it's shaped by experiences. Um, but we also have, a, a, you know, I think a, some kind of disposition that leads us to tribalism, you know, because guess what? If you take, um, let's just take a whole community of white people, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And you put train tracks in the middle of that community, you go have the people from this side of the train tracks against the people on this side of the train tracks. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like we find a way to divide in him in, in him. We find a way, whether it's gangs, whether it's race, whether it's religion. You know, if you in the same religion, then the, the religion break up and you got denominations. You know what I'm saying? And you fight against each other. The, 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 you know what I mean? You get Christian group versus Christian group. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So I don't know what it is about humans, man, that just want to divide. Uh, it could be a spiritual answer to that too. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, so, I, you know, so, so when it comes to the hate groups and stuff, man, I, I don't value it. I don't value it that much, man, because I just like, you know, it's just a form of, um, I think, I think a form of ignorance and a lack of understanding of, like I keep using this word, but humanity, man. You know what I'm saying? Like this is a big picture, and 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 somebody off on the side who hate black people, Jews and Latinos and Mexicans and all this stuff, you just you know, you you're not contributing to the world, bro. So I, I don't I don't spend it too much time. Like you just in your own world. Uh, I'm not gonna spend. You know, and and I, me personally, I just don't have enough time to. Uh, I don't take too much offense, and I don't spend no time to arguing and try to you know convert. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm operating at a certain plane at a certain level, and so uh, I'm not trying to drop. You know the frequency of what I'm what I'm um, working where I'm working at, unless I have to. So you know. You know what I mean? So when I see, you know, hate, you know, hate crime and all this stuff, and uh, I don't get, I don't, you know, it's a shame, man. And my heart goes out to the people who are hurt by it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's that, and that's the only way I can really, you know, ride in, in that area is through empathy for the people that are hurt. So, yeah, man. So you know, I watch that stuff, man. Black Klansman, man. Um, you ever see the movie? Uh, Oh man, it's a great movie. It's called uh Judas and the Black Messiah. Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that a was good a great movie. movie. Yeah, it, man, it's, it's a great movie. It's, I love I like it because it's a one, it's based here in, in our city, right? Yeah. But uh, two, I I like it. I I really like how how the movie is and how it, it's 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 history. Mm-hmm. Um it's just a great movie. And, yeah. And overall, like the way, um, like you know, the the goo, the dude that you know snitched, and and it's just crazy. Like, why, why, why you think he did it though? Like, although I, I'm sure I know the movie says it, but like overall, like we want to kind of weak, weak character, uh-huh. weak, weak character. You know, if you do something wrong, and then they blackmail you, um to do other things to 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 not you know for, so you can avoid punishment that's just weak character you know what i mean if i do something wrong and i get caught bro let me let me i ain't, I ain't snitching i ain't doing nothing let me let me uh, man if i did it let me let me do my let me whatever you know what i'm saying so i guess if i remember correctly he they had a lot of things on him you know what i'm saying and it basically was like hey we'll let you off i believe they, they got him because he stole the car i believe that's yeah the, yeah part of the movie yeah in the movie yeah so you know, it's it's uh it's, it's weak character, man. It leads people to do something like that, man. And then also, 
you know, a hatred of self, you know, in childhood, you know what I'm saying? For you to um, operate against your own community in such a way, you know what I'm saying? In some way, at some level, got to be a, a self-hatred there. What you, you thought of, of the relationship between the cop and the the dude? In, in what way? I remember, you know... Cause, in, gen they, in general, like, in, 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 yeah. what, in general, like, what would you... Yeah, man, from, I, from what I can remember... Um, I know it's a while for me to watch it from what I watched. It. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, like, yeah. I don't really want to get too much detail because I don't want to say the right, wrong thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just kind of, I kind of remember like um, how the cop would never let him feel comfortable. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I think he was kind of getting comfortable in his role and the cop was like, nah, like you still work for me or whatever. He started making demands. And stuff. I can't really remember, man. But um, yeah, I, I do remember that. I remember it was something about the relationship between him and the and the cop. And as the years went by, you know how it changed or whatever. Mm -hmm. But man, it's crazy that this stuff happened for real, man. You know, we 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 talk about it from movies perspective, man. But it's like, man, the government did really do these things, man. It, it, you know what I'm saying? And then, ever... but then we talk about some minor. Then you talk about something current. They'd be like, "No, nah, man, the government would never do nothing like that." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, but we got even under a rock. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, man. Yep. Did you ever see the movie The it's called, it's called Detroit, I believe. The what? Where Detroit. No. It's on Hulu. Oh, I, I oh, think oh, it's on Hulu, oh. where the cops to go into the I think was it a hotel room or whatever. Yeah, it is? yeah. I forgot what it is, but. What Somebody, were they? Were they, just, were they musicians or some or what were they? Were they I, just... I never saw it, man. Um who is that about um I just saw I just saw something about I'm like, man, that kinda so is it a TV show or a movie? Uh no, it's a movie. Hold on. Let me see. let me pull it up. Yeah. Let me share the screen. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, it's this one right here. Yeah, with the cop. I remember this for. I remember they showed the trailer for it, yeah. but I never saw it after that. Fun. Um, can you hear? Nope, nope. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't know. I can't. Uh, the audio. I'm not sure how. But well, that's that's good. Though. It might they might block it. But yeah, yeah, I remember seeing this trailer in a the movie theater before it came out, but I just never remember it coming out. Yeah, so it's this one right here. But you know, man, a lot of this stuff is done on purpose, bro. A lot of this stuff, if you notice, they show a lot of like traumatic stuff in Black history. You know what I'm saying? You know, and, and we need to know it. We need to have an acknowledgement of it. But it also, I think it has a re-traumatizing effect. Like they make it seem too dramatic? No, meaning like this. Or... Okay, okay. So let me, let me put you on game. Mm -hmm. You may know this. So... And during slavery times, right, if, a, let's just say a male slave mm -hmm. uh, did not fall in line, the slave master or the plantation owner would take him out and call all the slaves out to watch and they'd beat him in front of all the slaves, right? Sometimes kill him in front of all the slaves. So then what happens when you do that, then the mother, right, the female uh, enslaved person, you know, I don't want to call them slaves, I'm sorry, enslaved person. Mm -hmm. The mother would then turn to her children and be like, hey, you know, out of love, out of nurture, hey, don't you, don't ever talk back. Don't, you know, you better, you know, don't, don't do what master mm -hmm. say because I want to make sure that you're protected. You know what I'm saying? And so that's a natural thing. And But what you end up doing is you end up teaching children how to be obedient so they don't have to suffer consequences. And so now you have that going on over and over and over again. And I think the subconscious does the same thing. When you now you put on a slave movie in 2024, you make a movie about slavery and, and black people watch that movie, they still reliving that same trauma. 
You know what I'm saying? And it, 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 it's the same thing happened with the police officers, right? They show uh, somebody being shot on TV and they show a cop murdering somebody. Well, what does the mother, what does the black mother do to her black son, her young black son? She turn over and say, hey, Whenever you get stopped by the police, if you ever do, the, you do what the police say. You be compliant. You be obedient. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because they want they want survival. But it's like a cycle of authoritarian. It, it, it's wild, man. So so I you know I love black history movies too, man. But I but I heard that theory and it just always made me question. Like man, we always showing you know like just uh tra traumatic videos man to black people over and over again uh, if you want to if hollywood make a black movie it's gonna be a traumatic kind of thing what you think bro you ever heard that before no but like i i could see it in movies if i really think of it now like how you're saying it mm -hmm. like how it can never be like a movie where how, how i guess in how you guys could probably say it i can be the good guy or I could mm. I could finally have a movie where it's like I'm good, you know, like I, like finally, you feel me? Cause yeah. like, cause like, if I'm putting it in in like in a Hispanic Latino point of view, where yeah, where majority of these p movies that is these that I guess could be for like, uh, or like how do I say it? like I guess like could be more meaningful for us is like mm -hmm. of course movie where it's struggling and of course they make it through at the end like for for sure they, they got to go through like a labor job but then at the end they become this i don't know higher up at the end of the movie right yeah yeah or it gotta be these high school kids that are in trouble in a gang or whatever and then they're in jail mm -hmm. it gotta be or like again or like some cholos either they end up in jail or they get they get addicted to drugs and they kill themselves right yeah yeah so it, it's kind of understand is like where it's like Whereas a movie where we're kind of like the good people or where it's like, it's us, you know, like not where it's like kind of, we got to suffer again, you know, or it's just yeah. another, another guy, you know, another, another person like us that has to go through it. Like probably someone has, might've gone through it. You feel me? Cause again, like yeah. you're saying, it's probably tra traumatic experience. You feel me? Yep. Yep. And again, like a lot, a lot of superheroes, you know, are, are, are you know, yeah, black or brown, you feel me? Like, yeah, you exactly. Always a white guy, you know. So exactly. Like, do you see how you see what we went? You know how black people responded when black when Black Panther came out. Yeah. It was like you know, but people just came out. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. everyone just so happy to finally see something like that, man. Um, is there any Latino superheroes? Shit, uh, I know. Uh, Spider Man to 2099 is Miguel O'Hara. Okay. Okay. Uh, good. Blue Beetle. I know, but yeah, 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 yeah. Blue Did you Beetle? watch that? No, I haven't watched it. Yeah, it it's it somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's on HBO Max actually. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, that's pretty much. Oh, Miles Morales because he's like half oh, yeah, Puerto yeah, Rican yeah. and half black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we both yeah. we be like, yeah, Miles. Oh, yeah. my, my son loves Miles Morales, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. They, all the kids do, man. So that was a big thing. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but you know what, man? You know? Yeah. So, but see, that show you the 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 importance of media. You know what I'm saying? Man, I'm going to tell you, bro, there's nothing more important than the Cosby show. The Cosby <laughs> the show. Cosby you know what I'm saying? Show, yeah. yeah, dude. You know what I'm saying? It changed. Like, <laughs> See, Bill Cosby was on something. He was on something, but he was on something. You know Speaking what I'm saying? about Bill Cosby, what you, what you, what you think? We could go to another segment. Into this, I know, but... I know. But check this out, man. Mm. Uh, Cosby show, it showed a strong, talented, supportive empathetic father mm. who was funny and caring you know what i'm saying it showed a household of upper middle class to you know you know they weren't necessarily i guess rich i mean he's a doctor she's a attorney but um but it was just a lifestyle mm. that you we got exposed to really for the first time and uh no negative they, they, they didn't they wouldn't start in the hood it was nothing hood about it but it was just family yeah. In a nice neighborhood, in good schools, you know what I'm saying? They had diversity of friends, black, white. They had black friends, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They didn't live in an all-white neighborhood, but um, but it was just a, it, just a visualization of that alone was transforming to the black community. Now, what, what did he hit you next with? His girl went to Hillman in a different world. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And different world, you see just a HBCU life, man, and black college and what it was like. Dude, man, I would like this, I would like to study 
the effects of on the Cosby Show. I'm sure I'm sure there's probably multiple books out there about the effects on the Cosby Show and uh, on Black America and America as a whole. Because yeah, not only was the Cosby Show number one with Black people, it was the number one show in America. So so everybody tuned in on Thursday night to watch the Cosby Show. Yeah, you know? nah, bro, that was not my era, so. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's right, bro. <laughs> No, I'm good, bro. I know about Bill Cosby and what happened, bro, but. See, yeah, like, so not, that's a, it's a conspiracy about it, bro. They it say is. that he was, you know, you know. Uh, what you think on that? Man. See, it's, it's, see, let's finish Bill Cosby, but then we're going to go to another person. Okay, okay. But finish finish Bill Cosby. Man, you trying to get me in trouble, bro. No, I, I think, um, <laughs> no, really, I'll be honest. I don't, I'm, I'm an open-minded kind of person, so I don't know. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So I don't know. I never speak a definitive. I just wonder. Yeah, part yeah. Of, part of me wonders with these celebrities. Here's my conspiracy theory. Mm-hmm. Is that as you get to certain places when it comes to influence or power or money, I think you're allowed to do anything you want to do. You know what I mean? So I think that you know, it's possible that Bill Cosby did this in the in the in the seventies, eighties, nineties, and and the police know about it. And the judge said, Hey man, throw that away. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah, you know, give it to me, I'll take care of it. And they just make stuff disappear. And you can literally have a pass to do whatever you want to do, whether it's rape, kill, child molest, all of that stuff. I think these guys get passes. And then when they step out on the line. They literally have accumulated a folder of stuff that they can hold against them. So can you imagine? Let's just say there's a department of crime that says, "Hey, you rich, you want you can do whatever you want to do. Feel free, feel free to do whatever you want to do." And you're like, "Really?" And you might you might test it one day and smack a paparazzi. And nobody hears about it. It goes away. And then you might get caught drinking and driving. And nobody hears about it. Go away. And then you get then you go to a party and you find some people drunk and you take advantage of them. And nobody hears about it. You know what I'm saying? And you slowly build up this 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 terrible person, terrible trade thing. But it's totally fine because nobody's holding you accountable. And then one day in your fifties or sixties or seventies, you say something that they don't like, mm-hmm. and they say, "Nah, we need you to go along with this." And you say, "Man, I'm not going along with that." And they say, okay. And you go to sleep and you wake up. And now you say you're trending because all of these terrible things you've done in the past have not been shared to light. And now you're going to jail and you lost everything. Bankrupt, robbed, financial advisors robbed you, lawyer costs. You know what I'm saying? That's how they destroy you. They destroy you through lawyer fees and taxes. Oh, tax evasion. You ain't paid your taxes since the 80s. What you mean I ain't paid my tax? What you mean I got? You know what I'm saying? And so. Uh, they can bring you down. So I, I think that that's the, I think they, I'm assuming, I'm just guessing, bro. They give you everything, they give you the world, and then they hold it over your head at any moment. You know what I'm saying? But that's just, you know, kind of look, you know, just watching all these crazy things going on. I don't know. That's that's where my imagination takes me. I have no evidence. I have no, it's just kind of a thought. With Within that thought of yours, you think that's, that's how it is for everybody that kind of went through that? Let's say for like R. Kelly, and like for well, I'm not, I, if you want, we can get into R. Kelly too. But I, I really don't want. I mean, if you want, eh. But I'll just mention yeah. it right now. But as the like for the next person, I'm because that's like a good segue that I want that I was we were going through, and it's like with Jeff S. S. Fien. Like, is that how you think that how it it all went down for them too? Especially with Jeff. Man, um, I I don't, you know what I'm saying? It's like, uh, I try to follow the stuff, man. I'm just like you, bro. I'm just on Twitter, just reading these comments and stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I, th- I think that'll fit into the explanation I just gave, you know? Do you know a lot about the Jeff Esteen case and stuff like that? Um... I mean, I don't. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I mean, I mean, I watched the documentary on Netflix. Okay. Um, or like, based on like what you, I guess, know of, like, what, what's your input on that? Like, what, what? Man, I don't really. Um. Or like, based on I can people... believe, it. I can believe it. 
And I can believe that there's this list. Uh-huh. A lot of people on there. Um, I do also believe that just because you visit the island, you know, if, if the list ever come out, which I don't think it ever come out, but if the list ever came out, you know, I don't know what value of it because you can't automatically associate guilt with that. You know what I'm saying? People could have took a group trip there and not partake. And some people could have, you know what I'm saying? You know, it's like these ditty parties, right? Some people have been at the ditty parties. <laughs> they don't mean everybody, you know what I'm saying? Some people probably left at seven. Some people probably left at seven in the morning the next day. So I don't know. So when it comes to like crimes and stuff, man, at the same time, bro, here's what's true. We are only getting this information from the media. So if you're talking about Bill Cosby, R. Kelly, Diddy, any of these guys, mm-hmm. that stuff could well, all that stuff could be true, but but we only got one source of information. And I know for a fact, I've seen things with my own eyes on how the media twists things on purpose for their benefit. So uh, I'm not justifying any kind of behavior, and I'm not saying anybody didn't do it, because I, I, I don't want to ever speak against a victim. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Um, you don't, you don't but at the it, same man. time, because I see a headline across the across the the thing, you know, I don't automatically judge. But see, that's the point, man. You know, we can spend so much time. We spend so much time, you know, um, thinking about other people. We're not thinking about our own stuff and our own business. You know what I'm saying? And it, and guess what? It's dude. It's Super Bowl week, right? Mm-hmm. Patrick Mahomes. I always been. I mean, I'm a Bears fan. For sure, but I always like this 49ers, so I'm cheering for the 49ers. Uh, I, but, I'm um, not a Mahomie fan, bro. Yeah, yeah, but let yeah. me tell you, but let me tell you. So I can't stand the Kelsey, the Kelsey right now either. Yeah, but see, but see what I'm saying. But see, watch the watch the trajectory that you about to see. He came on the scene, mm-hmm. young, new, one. Everybody cheered for him. one, two. All oh, everybody cheered one. You know, went to three. Oh, is he the goat? And now he he he's so successful. What happens? Not he the villain. Oh man, I'm tired of seeing him win. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Uh oh, uh, you know, man. I mean, we need somebody else in there, man. We don't tired of Mahomes. Nobody, nobody like Mahomes. Nobody like Travis. They the villains. But but that small little example is everybody. You know what I'm saying? Let this podcast take off. Oh man, Tino Vibe, man. I've been knowing him since he was a little kid, man. That's my guy, man. We were to school together. Oh man, you win it, bro. Oh, you got the new career. Oh, he's got the new contract. Man, you on Spotify and iHeartRadio and everything. Nah, oh, man, he changed, man. You know, he ain't, you know what I'm saying? Nah, man, he ain't that good. He ain't never been that good, man. He must have, he must be an Illuminati or something. You know what I'm saying? And they just <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like yeah, people yeah. want you to win to a certain point. And then I, I feel like that's not always the case, though, my guy. Man, I hope not. I feel like it's not, um, because I, I I'm not, just, I'm, not, I'm, not, I don't know how much, how far, how much I can say, because I'm, I don't know, I don't know, I'm not good with my words right now with the, with I'm trying to say, but it's like I feel like it's not for everybody, like not everybody's, I guess, wants the world to see you win. But I think that at that point is like it's up to really you if you're trying to really make it or not. You feel me? That's true. I do know, here's what I do believe. I do believe we have to be, if you're going to be in the spotlight, you have to be okay with people not like you. I think, I think well, some, that's people true. Are, yeah. some people are going to love you and no, some people are going to not like you, no matter what. For sure, yeah, no matter what, yeah. And I know there's a lot of competi- competition, you know, out there within, any, within like just anybody trying to do anything in life. There's a lot of competitivity, but like, I think where, whether if it's like where you care or not, the majority is like you shouldn't really care. You know, yeah. you really do love what you're doing, keep doing it, you know, because that eventually it'll probably pay off. I mean, it it happens. Does it happen all every single time? I mean, I'm not too sure because I, I can't say how many people tried it that really made it, you know, like. Yeah, yeah, I know, man. But, you know, so, so. All of these things that we're talking about today, it's just it's just fun to think about it. You know what I'm saying? Smoke, yeah, yeah, drink, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And just kind of just converse. That's what they used to do all over. If you go to Spain, Italy, back in France, they just go to a coffee shop, man. They just talk politics, bouncing philosophy, ideas. They just talk. 
You know what I'm saying? And so, so this is good for us to do that. Um, but on the end, you know, because I used to be a big time conspiracy, not a big time, but I used to be a conspiracy theorist, but you learn, you get caught up in the weeds and you miss the beautiful thing about life. So just imagine me, you know, you we can worry about all these other things, but I'm like, in, in reality of everyday life, none of that stuff matters. So what matters is now you get a chance to uh, go home, mm -hmm. chill out, get you a cup of Jane and Mary's ice cream, take some, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Have your arthritis feel better, have your skin clear up, get a good night's sleep from ice cream, you know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> back pain go away, uh, dealing with uh, maybe the nausea from the meds you got to take, you know what I mean? And so that's what ice cream does, man. Even from the non-infused side, you got an ice cream shop and you just get to come in for your family and just enjoy those 25 minutes, man. Just everybody just chilling, eating ice cream. While all these crazy things are going on. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. The, the, the beautiful thing about ice cream, it brings family, date nights, teams after baseball to get to come together. Man, it's fun being ice cream, man. Dude, it's better. I mean, there's no other job that's, that, that brings more joy than just being an ice cream guy. And you got people come in and say, oh, man, it looks so good, but I'm lactose intolerant. And I say, oh, man, I got the sorbets. Yeah. You got sorbets? Oh, you got, you know, and then you just re-engage. You got, I got a solution for everything. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, sure. so it show you how intense the world is, but man, we can't touch it. It's all, that's why we might be in assimilation, like Elon Musk said, because it's all just environment that we can't fully touch or control or have you know what i'm saying just so uh so sometimes you just got to back out of that world and just enjoy your neighbors and friends and family like you know what i'm saying the cannabis the plant oh yeah you know you know you just get a uh you know you just got to experience the present for sure and live in the moment yeah, yeah man yeah, you yeah. never know what tomorrow holds man honestly zombies bro nowadays. back to a bacteria a bacteria you know what i'm saying <laughs> <This guy. laughs> out of wuhan man, it's a, it's a flesh-eating bacteria out of wuhan Ooh. laboratories you know what i'm saying so uh, you, you were mentioning you're a bears fan my guy I, i've been wanting to talk about the bears um i see you you wrote your pro justin fields i say yeah. I say, uh, I think it's time to go, man. Man, dude. You know what? In, po <laughs> in polls, we trust, man. I trust the GM. I trust the GM because I think the GM would be, man, you know, we, we you know, he be the... Who doesn't know what they're doing in the Bears? It has to be somebody up. I'm not blaming everything on fields because I feel like he's a he's a good player. He does yeah. good plays and all. He's He, he runs the ball, of course, he, you know, but like, what, who who does it, who's not doing their job? No, right? no, no, no. That's the thing. Everybody's doing their job. Everybody's doing probably exactly what they're supposed to be doing. When Ryan Fields came in, people forget he tore everything down. When the Bears step on the field, we play against a team that has a hundred million dollars more of salary cap than we do. We're supposed to lose all those games. We got sixty four million now after we signed Sweat. We got sixty four before we signed Sweat. We had uh like ninety million dollars. And salary cap. So every team we play spent ninety more million dollars on their players than our players. So we supposed to lose. That's why we lost the first year. Got the first round pick, and then he signed a few more. And got a couple of draft picks. Mm -hmm. Boom. So if we keep Justin Fields, we get more draft picks. You know what I'm saying? Get them more. It's all about blue chip players, and we surround with more blue chip players. Then next thing you know, we go be the 49ers. Who the best player on the 49ers? They got Nick Bosa. Blue chip. They got uh Debo Samuels, blue chip. They got Ayuk, blue chip. They got Mc McCaffrey, blue chip. They got those linebackers, blue chip. You know what I'm saying? They got like eight, nine, Wait, ten. What's a, what's a blue chip? Sorry. Blue chip is like a a, a top rated recruit, like the the premier of the athlete. So like a number you know one saying? pick. Well, not necessarily a pick. It's just how you rate players. Oh, a blue okay. chip athlete. So for example, if you looked at um, let's just pick a red, like the Dallas Cowboys. You would say Michael Parson is blue chip. Dak Prescott's a blue chip player. You need CD those. CD Lamb's a blue I, chip. I don't yeah. think Prescott is, is a blue chip, although I'm a Cowboys <laughs> fan. I'm a Cowboys fan. Man, this man. dude throwing 5,000 yards. How many more yards y'all want him to throw? Dude, he fucking sucks as on playoff <laughs> season. Man, how many more yards? How many more times? He, he can't be the only one out there. Who else? Who the running back? What the running back do in the playoffs? Who is that? Tony Pollard? Yeah. Yeah. 
uh, oh, see, I'm not good with, with numbers like that, but, yeah, he but I know nothing, he, he was Dave. doing good. I know that he was doing Man. good. Yeah, y'all got out coached. The Packers out. The Packers took a team that was mm-hmm. not as good as the Cowboys and beat the Cowboys. And that's that coaching. Kid, that, that kid is going somewhere though. That Jordan Love kid. I hate to hear that, bro. Really? I yes, think, man. I think we have, Jesus. I, man, I think, you young, bro. I didn't lost to the Packers for the last thirty-seven <laughs> years of my yeah. life, bro. I can I, I made a joke uh when they first beat us this season. I'm like, watch him say he owns us like Rogers did. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Man, dude, they had Brett Favre, then yeah. Aaron Rodgers, and now they got Jordan Love. Most teams don't get one great quarterback in their whole franchise, man. And they, they mean, got three back to back at, to back. Look, look at the Patriots with Belichick, man. Terrible. Never could have done what they did with Tom Brady. They can't, they couldn't do it, man. You can't reproduce. You can't replicate. It's like what what uh what Jay Z say to Dane Dash, bro. You know, you said you made hove. Okay, make another hove. You know what I'm saying? You ever heard that song? Nah, dude, it's a song called uh, "Lost Ones" by Jay Z. Okay. It's cold. I got, it's I got cold. low key going to more of my Jay Z. Um, yeah, this this discography. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But you no, know, but, um, but but speaking on on the on the Bears, so what what they think you should do? They should just trade the the number one picking and. And get the uh greatest generation of this next gen uh the greatest receiver of the next generation, Marvin Harris Jr., bro. He the best player in the draft. He will be a superstar for the next 15 years. You see what I'm saying? Get him, uh-huh. get it, get it uh, a center, get it a guard. I mean, uh yeah, a, a center, a guard, just build up, man. Yeah, I say you know build the lineup for sure. Get another tight end because you have Kem- uh Kemet on one end and you yep. got DJ Moore. Yeah, you get uh you got New guy, and you, know, you just need a tight end, and that's it. But yeah, but then that is that. I feel at that point, if 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 Fields now has his his weapons, he should be able to do stuff. Now yeah. that should be the 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 like the the great finale for him if if he's working exactly, it. exactly. But guess what? And if you don't, so if you trade the number one pick, you get a pick, you get a first round this year, and you have a first round next year. So then you have two first rounders next year. You can get another quarterback. Listen, man, we can't predict these quarterbacks, man. All the great quarterbacks, man, they're coming in the second round, fourth round, sixth round, seven. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, seventh round. Uh, Patrick Mahomes was drafted like eleventh. You know what I'm saying? And Brock Purdy was drafted in the sixth round, seventh. The Mr. Irrelevant. I, I, it, I still can't believe he was gonna be ours. We dropped know, him for man. fucking Trubisky. What the fuck? <laughs> Dude, nobody even knew. Like, we was like, what? I wanted Deshaun Watson. At least I was closer. I was like, man, Deshaun Watson is the obvious number one pick, man. Really? We didn't even take we Deshaun were, we Watson. Were... At the time, remember at the time, Deshaun Watson just came off the national championship game at Clemson. Um, Remember, he was great before, uh, you know, his uh, incident. Really? You know? I thought, yeah. I thought he was pretty recent, QB. Who, Deshaun Watson? Yeah. It was, uh, we had to choose between Deshaun Watson, Miss Trubisky, uh-huh. Patrick Mahomes, and another guy named Kaiser. I don't even know who he is. Kaiser. It was four quarterbacks. They were Just like now, they are arguing between Caleb Williams, Jalen Johnson, Drake May. So in that year, we had a pick between those four. Deshaun Watson was the national champion, and he had the best college career. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Miss Trubisky was like the one person that nobody knew nothing about. He 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 rode the bench for all of his time in college, and he finally started and just had a great year at North Carolina. One year, one year. I don't know what the fuck they saw in that kid. And not only did we not take him, but we traded up to get him. I know. We traded up. <laughs> He yeah, sucks crazy. ass. I mean, look man, what he did yeah. for Pittsburgh, man. Everyone I know, see, I know, man. Rudolph. Yep. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm like, you're sad, bro. It's hard being a Bears fan, bro. It's hard. It what about, I think you think our defensive line, our de- defensive has been getting good. I feel yeah, like man. we did a terrible trade. I think was it last year when we got rid of uh, Rosha, Ro, uh Was it Smith? Yeah, man, who and that's the thing, it? man. Uh, Roquan Smith, uh, who else was, was and it? and then the running back. See, the the problem is the Bears say we don't have good players, and when the players finally get good, they want to get paid, and then we let them go. You got to pay somebody, bro. We should have kept Roquan Smith. We should have kept David Montgomery. I know it's more expensive, but man, you got to pay. We we got a hundred million. You know what I'm saying? That's how you build a team. So look, look, look how those two players are now. 
Smith Pro is Bowl with the man. Ravens. He's doing. Yep. He, they went amazing, although he, they. I don't know what happened that game. Yeah, they choked. And then you got David Montgomery again. They. I, I, yeah. I don't know what happened that game. Second yep. half. <laughs> yep. But, but they lead their team in the NFC, yeah. you know, championship games, man. AFC championship game. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, so, why, why, why can't we have been here? And then again, like you said, we don't play, play uh, our players. And then that's kind of what I've been, what I hear a lot, you know, in, in yeah. here in Chicago is that Chicago doesn't pay for their team. Think about it. Jalen Johnson is one of the best cornerbacks in the league. And we're like, well, I think we're going to sign him. I don't know. Let's see how you do. Like, you know, like you want these players to be good and you and they so good you will actually you should how come you if you notice like chicago when they sign their players they always argue and everything versus other players it's like a celebration like hey man we, we signed a contract man we got it done and we worked it out on scene everybody happy it's a good thing man you earned this money you know what i'm saying but in the chicago it's like we be trying to low ball people want to hold out it's just it's just terrible man i don't know what it is man it's a so, but if somebody earned their money, uh-huh. you know, nobody get a big contract up front. So you got to earn the money. You know what I'm saying? So Rokon Smith played all those years at all-star level, didn't get paid. And when it's time to get paid, we say, we're not going to pay you. Which, yeah, it's stupid, man. So is, is that the same way like, with the Bulls? Man. And with every team in Chicago, then? Man, you're trying to ruin my night now, bro. We was having a good time until you started talking about the Bulls. <laughs> See, I'm not, I'm not uh, like, more informed with the Bulls or... Man, it's terrible, so, bro. So it's, like, it's terrible. How is that? It's terrible, man. We went from a dy- dynasty in the 90s to... Man, it's terrible, bro. 2000s with Derrick Rose and the other yep. top players. And what yeah, happened? man, we've been, we've been cursed, man. Even now, man, just now, I don't know if you know this week... We was trying to trade Zach Levine, and really? nobody really wants him because he got a big contract, and he he's yeah. a really good player, but he's just not he's not a winner. Like he he plays like a one on one kind of style of basketball, and we was just we was trying to trade him all year, and the trade deadline is like February 9th. Uh-huh. And we was about to trade him, and then he just had surgery. He out for the year. We can't even yeah. trade him. Now he just hurt. He just hurt done for the season. Yeah. Now he's stuck on our team, dude. You know what I'm saying? It's it's crazy. It's like we just curse, man. But Kobe White balling, man. You know who Kobe know White you. is? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Kobe I White balling. I actually had a, had a guy. Uh, he, yeah, he's a owner of uh, Fruit Wraps. His his brand is called Peels. Yeah. He, he came on the show and he kind of, I think he personally knows his brother of mm-hmm. Kobe White. Yeah. And he kind of knows a little, a little personal of Kobe White. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, but yeah, I, I seen kind of highlights. That kid is going off right now, for yeah, sure. Yeah, man. Yep, star. So that's the only way we can do it, man. We, you know, let somebody develop because we're not. What happened? With, what you think on the Derrick Rose era? What happened with? Man, I mean, we ran them to the ground, man. Um, Thibodeau, man, Thibodeau. That team was great. That team actually wasn't great, but he coached them to be great because he got every ounce out of these players all these players left it with other teams and it just never was as good because uh you know the coach Thibodeau was great but he also he just they, they professional players man and he just ran them in the ground and then with Derrick Rose if you watch his highlights he is just so explosive right the way he goes to the rim yeah yeah and the way he does everything you know what I'm saying and when you are that explosive man I think sometimes the body can only take so much uh, Russell Wilson, Russell Westbrook is a very similar player, but he he's managed to stay healthy. But Derrick Rose, man, uh, was to me better than Russell Westbrook, man, in his prime. Yeah, and, uh, I feel like after his first surgery, I think that's where he started to just go down. Sad, yep. That's say, but I yeah, feel like that that team was a good era. I just felt like we just couldn't surpass LeBron and the Heat. LeBron, I, man. I just I just hate yep. it. Fucking, I still kind of hate LeBron, but I still. Oh, yeah, dude, yeah. Like, <laughs> yep. Wow. yep, yep. Just think about how many teams didn't win a championship because they were great at the same time. The Bulls were great, so the Knicks teams and the Pacer teams they never got a championship. And so I think we got the chance to experience a little bit because we we were really good during the LeBron era. Yeah. That Joe Kim Noah, Lou Aldane, Derrick yeah, Rose team. Yeah, yeah man. I'm saying, guys Gibson, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Todd Gibson. Kyle Hendricks. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, so, um, we, had a, we had a good team, man. <laughs> oh, man. They came in balling. You know? Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> so yeah, we had we you know, we had a we had a great fun team, man. But um, you, we couldn't you, get you, past the king, King James. You uh, you a baseball guy or not really like that? Man, you know, I mean, I follow it. I mean, I don't okay, I don't have time okay. to watch you, it, but you I a read. Sox or a Cubs guy? I'm White Sox man, Southside uh, okay, die. Okay. Not bad. Don't don't let the hat discourage. I'm a I'm a coach. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's good, you, man. I got you, man. I got you. Uh, it's hard being a Hoss, it's hard being a Sox fan right now too, man. Because it's like, man, like like the like not last year, but the year before last, mm. we really thought we had a World Series cal- cal- yeah. caliber team. You guys really, and they just, uh, you guys really did. Made Chicago thought you guys were gonna. Make yeah, it. So and then they just hired the wrong. The they hired, yeah, man. They hired the wrong coach, the wrong manager, man. And everybody just just underperformed, bro. It, it it's it's one thing to be bad. It's another thing to think you gonna be great and be bad. You know what I mean? That hurts. What do so, you think on the on the Ozzy era? Man, I love Ozzy again, bro. Well, so what 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 happened? I was a kid when he was he when they won the World Series. I was five Man. when they won, and and what was? What, what some happened? people. Some people just don't do well with bosses, man. And Ozzy Ginn was just the one, you know what I'm saying? Like, just imagine if you're just really talented at what you do, but you just speak the truth and you and you and you harsh and talking your 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 boss. Mm-hmm. At some point, no matter how good you are, they go want to get rid of you. It's just like a, it's just like a um, you can have an incredible wide receiver, but who's just a diva and just a problem in the locker room. It's like, man, we can't. We just we just as a as a as a Man to man, I don't want to deal with somebody talking to me like that. That's what I'm guessing. I don't really know. But uh he was just very controversial and he had a hard time with management. But his personality is one that's very confrontational and very direct. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes people don't like employees who are confrontational and direct. And they try to remind us that we're employees. Well, that's kind of sucks. Because like it, 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 you're like a truth guy, and all. that kind of shows a lot about you, you know, that like you're just straightforward. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what people love, thing. Ozzy. People don't like, you know, yeah, poor yeah. people. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Nah, man, that's what's up, man. That's crazy. Yeah, I yeah just people know, love I just, Ozzy again, man. Yeah, I just remember uh, my dad would have talked a lot about, about the Sox and during that era and, you know. Yep, uh, we won a World Series, man. Yeah, that's crazy. And then the Cubs won recent 2016, and then that's it, man. The whole That whole team <laughs> just went off after that as well everyone went their separate ways and now look Cubs. but you know it, it turned out they made a good deal right because they know you know all those guys want all that money and then yeah. and they, none of them are really worth it right no nah, well no nah, they're really not in good teams i could just say i think anthony rizzo is just with the yankees okay is he earning uh, his money i believe so and then what I about chris probably, bryant uh, i'm not sure where he ended up i think he went to colorado or something I, I think so. Yeah, you're right. I believe so. Yeah. I think the only one I kind of feel bad for is Javi Baez because I think he doesn't play a lot for the Tigers if he's still there. I believe so. But he got paid though, didn't he? I think so, but still. Yeah, yeah. You ain't so they're looking at it like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So what they're saying is people hate the Cubs for kind of getting rid of all these all their favorite players, but it seemed like they kind of made some good business decisions on that end. Like these guys were might not had no more juice left in the tank. Yeah, for sure, bro. That's more yeah. Because yeah, I feel like at the end, it's always about the money. Yeah. Did you want? Did you? Did you want them to sign? Uh, what's his name? Otani. What's his name? The oh, Japanese. The, the uh, was it? Was he Korean? Yeah, yeah. Is he? Yeah, uh, what's his name? Otani. Otani. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Man, he pitch I and back. He I like the best pitcher and the best hitter in the league. <laughs> yeah, I would have. Ooh, who would have wanted? But now he ended up with the Dodgers. How much was it, man? Like eight hundred million. Think so, something like that or forty. Was it was it like that or was it forty? Bro, it was. No, no, it was, it was it was ridiculous. Like the oh. the Cubs was like, the Cubs pulled out early because they was like, we can't even. Let me, uh, <laughs> it let was me see, higher uh, than our salary. Yeah, yeah. Dude, exactly. <laughs> Man, can yeah, you imagine making that kind forward. of investment? <laughs> uh, no, nah, but yeah, I know he's a high high top player. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Let me see a contract. Dude, uh, seven hundred million. Damn. Over twenty years. That's a lot for a baseball player. Yeah. If you really think about it, for but for twenty years. Yep. That's crazy. But then again, you're in the, you know, city of angels. You know. 
700 million. Man, to play baseball, I should have, I should have, I should have tried harder. Yeah. When I, was a kid. <laughs> I should have stayed there. I should have stayed in yeah. Little League. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, man. That's crazy. Cause actually, my dad really put me in like really serious baseball when I was a kid. Yeah. So, like, but at the age of 10, soccer had to just like take my interest and fall in love man. with the game of soccer. So, yeah. I stopped playing soccer and I mean, stop playing soccer. I stopped playing baseball and just pursued it soccer. Yeah. Did you play in high school? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bit, yeah, a little bit. Uh, but then at the end, I just decided to play rugby for my senior year. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's fun? So, yeah, I had fun, bro. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, ended, I ended up trying to, because I, I went to UIC for a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, and I decided to join the rugby team over there, and I was like a whole fucking stick compared to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so really? I like, yeah, I was literally skinny. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, like, like even like the slimmest dude, but he was buff, like just like wide. Yeah. Like, but I was like skinny, like a t like a twig, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was like, yeah, no, I'm not trying to get hurt or anything. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's true, man. It's like it was like college rugby. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I could imagine like football players and shit like that. How yeah. big they must be. You feel me? Yeah, but, but like uh, leading on to our last topic, you know, the main topic of the last one would be our music, my guy. Oh man, let's do it. Uh, so uh, it looks like we 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 reached our the the top limit of the pod, from what I see. So uh -huh. what's up? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, uh, yep. no, good ass conversation, Jason. Man, it was great, bro. Yeah, but uh. Let's go with the hip hop. I see um what's going on with the hip hop industry. I kind of see. Kinda have been see, I'm representing my public enemy, bro. You can I'm old school. Yeah. I but no, nah, man, I love I love hip hop, man. I love all hip hop, man. I think um what's going on with the hip hop industry now? I feel like it's kind of weird going on right now. What, what's going on? Yeah, man. I think um this uh young thug trial mm -hmm. is more significant for the industry than people think. You know, they using his lyrics in there. They shape, you know, they 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 chopping down on the influence that he's having in the city of Atlanta and other people, and they're trying to bring it down. And then you have all these crimes associated with this music. The music has gotten too real. See, when I was growing up, hip hop was like, you know, you had to be real as a person, mm -hmm. but the crimes and stuff you rapped about wasn't real. Now they, you know, it's like a hundred percent real, man. They telling their stories, man, their biographies and this music, and a lot of it is involving crime. And then the record company is promoting it and the record company is promoting beef. Here's what I, here's what's gonna happen, bro. Somebody's gonna get smart and a family member of a of some, you know, rapper or something, they're gonna sue the record company. Because the record company is one is the is the is the uh the entity that is profit profiting off of all this violence and um you know negative crime that's going on in music you see what i'm saying yeah. so 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 what's going to happen is i think they're going to stop signing some of these real artists you know like the like the hip-hop you know street yeah, you know, so like, I, I I predict in the next ten years you're gonna see a decline in the um the street like, version of hip hop and a more incline in just the music. See, I feel like how you were mentioning to like back in the day, like old school hip hop. Um, just because my dad listens to it a lot and I grew up around it a lot, but like the way he would image music to me is that they're saying sending either a message or storytelling here mm -hmm. is like violence guns sex drugs but then again it's like it's it's kind of again like somewhat of storytelling there's journalism because it's it's what they gone through probably what someone that they know has probably gone through mm -hmm. so and then with now uh, with the Young Thug case, and I'm sure with just other cases as well, like I'm sure with the Lil Durk as too, as they pulled lyrics from his music before, um, that they have to pull their art, you know? Like at the end of the day, this is art, this is music. Like why, why can't, why is music or why is art getting people in trouble? Yeah, exactly. Um, 
Like why? Why? Like why? Why is it going to that case? You know, like why is it going in that direction? Like, is it because there's no other evidence to to whatever to whatever man, the case might be? Or that's a very good that's a very good point, man. I mean, maybe not because I mean, I, yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. It's it's one of those things, man. I think they're trying to set a precedent. They they they're going to use this case as a precedent. You see what I'm saying? Because before this case, I don't. Well, I'm not gonna say that because Lil Boosie said that they used his lyrics against him in his court trial. You know. So did uh, um, YM Melly, or why? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Man, what? dude, I don't know, man. That, that's a that's a crazy story. That's a crazy story from all right there. Yeah, right. Melly story, yeah. You, you think he did it? Bro, I don't, man. I, that's what I'm saying. Like, I can't see no other way. The way they present the story, mm -hmm. I can't see no other way that he did it. But, you know, but like I said, we only get the information from the media. What we get, yeah, from what yeah. We, they want us to know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But, uh, again, I think, like, with the law getting more involved with our with the music, it's kind of just ruining music in general, you know, because it's, it's meant to enjoy and, and just entertainment, you know. Yeah, it's not meant for now for like oh watch I gotta watch out what I write you feel me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta switch this bar to another different. Yeah, bar. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Like Fat, you hear what Fat Joe said. Fat Joe was like, man, dude, ninety five percent of what I rap was was false. You know what I'm saying? How can you hold that against me? I'm just, I'm just, you know, rhyming and trying to create a narrative. Now, now we know Fat Joe was legit in the streets. You know what I'm saying? But he was exaggerating what he put in his lyrics for fun. Like they all probably do, and like they all probably should. It's okay. To, I mean, I don't think there's no problem with like exaggerating. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh man, just hopped off a private jet. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got no private jet. You just, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you say it in the rap. Oh, I, re I remember uh, when they were hating on Future because he, they were saying he doesn't pop oh, yeah. drugs or, or pop oh, bottles or whatever. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. But that's legit though. Like, why? You know, you know why they native? That's the thing too, man. How old is music? Do you think? I think it's ages, bro. I yeah, think it's it's ages. As old as humanity. I feel like there's even. I think I consider. I think there's what I would consider songs that we haven't even heard. You know, yeah. what would be considered songs probably in in some type in the time that we didn't even like. No, yeah. Are you feel me? Because like, I'm yeah. Because on like Apple Music, you can go all the way to like Mozart and shit like that. You yeah, know? that's true. Yeah, exactly, <clears throat> exactly. So how much of it was at all this music we listened to? How many genres? How many eras were the music just highlighting the worst of human character? You know what I'm saying? I think it's a I man. I man, I love hip hop. Man, I've been listening up forever. Like, what What do you mean? What I'm saying is, man, what is what is highlighted in rap today? Drug dealing. Pimping, being a gangster, scamming, popping pills, perks, mm -hmm. you know, double cups, syrup. You know what I'm saying? Whatever is worse, the worst thing going on in humanity is what we celebrate in hip hop. Yeah. Why is that? Because I'm not sure. I mean, well, when, I'm not. I'm not. Well, let me say that back. Probably because they made it into an to a certain type of music you know like an urban type of music you feel me what, man what, like the like hip-hop like cool... always been urban run yeah. dmc you no, i got a question and mm -hmm. run dmc time do you think there was drugs going on and pimping and robbing and scamming yeah yeah, I, I, they yeah, lived in, yeah. yeah it's Queens. always been it's always been a thing though that's yeah. the thing but why see, are we acting like it's something like oh my god you know right but see even though that stuff was going on the art didn't highlight it. The art was uplifting. It was creative. It was, you know, all these things. And so the generation, it was something happened, bro, in the 90s. Like, man, dude, I grew up listening to Run DMC, Public Enemy, Kid and Play, Big Daddy Kane, um, you know, uh, Will Smith, uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff Fresh. You know what I'm saying? You had a variety. Yeah, Tribe Called Quest. Then you start getting to the Tribe Called Quest uh -huh. and the Busta Rhymes. And then, whoop, man, when Wu-Tang came, Wu -Tang, bro, bro, it just, boom, it just shut it down. Now, yeah. now that's as real as you get is Wu-Tang. But they still not, they still wasn't 
celebrating the worst in humanity. But 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 just not thinking now. You know what well, I'm I, saying? Like I feel like like Wu Tang was just talking about what was going on in the hood for them. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Now now, now compare that to the content and rap now. I think I think it was a uh, I think it's a um my conspiracy theory on that. That's the run the theme of today's conversation. Conspiracy theory is that um it's purposeful because the the guy who was talking about you know uh you know drug abuse per, you know, percocets and syrup and all that stuff mm-hmm. is is very very talented but then you have a very very talented guy who don't talk about none of that and they both try to get a record deal they get a record deal to the guy who is promoting the terrible product and then that guy see him get a record deal and they say man we get you a record deal if you talk like this and then he got to decide do i want to rap about that stuff or not if you don't, he don't get a record deal. If you do, he get a record deal. Now he on too. You see what I'm saying? So I think the industry drives that narrative. I think it's a real narrative. And I think it's a time and place for it. You know what I'm saying? But there's so many other things that, you know what I'm saying? Where's the Fugees from, to, you know, like, you know, the Fugees? Where are they at for to now? now? Where is the, um, the, 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 the brat, the, uh, the group that's like, um, you know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, mm-hmm. we got J. Cole. You know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? We got you, Kendrick. We, you got Kendrick. You know what I'm saying? But they they forced them, you know, they so talented. You can't deny them. But yeah, what about all the other not, other But that's the thing between those two artists. Well, well, majority is J. Cole, is that they they don't care about like winning a Grammy or like yeah. or being out there. Their their songs hitting on the radio. Like they don't care about that. They just care they just about their music. The music. You know, yeah. And yep. that, that, that's what that's what I, I really fucks about them, especially because like one, I'm like a big, I, I love J Cole too. Yeah, yeah, me and too. He's a talented artist, and um, in the gram, I I saw that this year he was like nominated for the greatest rapper of the year, mm-hmm. and I'm like, dude, he's been like the greatest rapper I feel like of of the generation of this generation, you know? Yeah. Because like, cause like although I feel like he's not like. He's again like listen like underground and stuff. Mm-hmm. Still like, I think all his songs are 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 great. Like I yeah, think my favorite album is twenty fourteen Forest Hill Drives. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Favorite album, yeah. Yep. Um, he tried to drop knowledge on that. What's that KOD album? What's that called? Oh yeah, KOD album. Yeah, 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 that yeah, one, yeah. yeah, that one. I think he was sending a, a message out. A message too. on that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, definitely. And then I actually, when he came, I went to his concert when he came for the For Your Eyes Only mm-hmm. tour. Yeah, I was there. Oh, man. How was it, bro? It you know what I'm I like, I loved it, bro. Yeah, uh, yeah. I went crazy when he played all like uh, workout. He, he, I went crazy on, on, uh, when he sang two, a tale of two cities. Yeah. Uh, and uh, also power trip, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yep. I, I liked it. I liked it. Uh, he actually came out like in a whole like gel jumpsuit and stuff. Like okay. So like his whole performance was was pretty nice too. Like again, like sending like his message of his theme, you know, of like the album. You feel me? Because yeah, because of the year. Like I think that year, some shit. I think some shit happened during that year when he dropped the that album. Okay, okay. I you can't know, remember. Like in 2016, I believe. 2016, okay. 2017, something. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan, man. You know, he did Kanye a little bit at one point. I was a little he salty did. at him. He yeah, really he did. did. Like, it was kind of legit, but, you know, I, I get what he was saying. You I know? mean, I ain't gonna lie. I do miss the old Kanye. Yeah, everybody do. Yeah. But, I, I mean, I, I, you know, man, but, um... But like how you I just I, it, 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 it's just it's just just the, just the journey is just entertaining just to watch because he gonna take you somewhere every different you know what I'm saying man you know from the Yay album in Wyoming to the uh, Jesus is a King album yeah you know what I'm saying Donna. then he kids it Donda Donda was crazy yeah bro. like the rollout man just the visuals from that we had the spike suits on the red mm-hmm. then he got like kicking it with like Baby and Mary, Marilyn oh, Manson yeah. and just you know what I'm saying it's just yeah. an experience that's what he see. People think people uh, Kanye is performance art. That's what he's giving you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's 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 the whole thing is art. I love you know what uh, I mean? his first uh his first listening party to Don uh, was when he came out in the red Yeezys and everything all red. 
Yeah. Uh, just I, a I, white. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> I mean, who can do that? Who can do that? Who can control the whole football stadium and just stand in the middle of the stadium right. and just have people go crazy, bro? Yeah, man. I think that's a little, that's like Michael Jackson type right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You ever uh, see when Michael Jackson perform at the Super Bowl? Uh, a little bit on YouTube. Yeah, little clips of it. Yeah, like, man. Uh, yeah. I remember watching it live. I was a sophomore in high school. Michael Jackson came out, like he came up uh-huh. and he was standing like this. And everybody was going crazy. <laughs> you know, and he was just standing like this and he didn't move. It was like 30 seconds, six. It's like two minutes went by and people going crazy. And then he go like this. He said, Psh. and everybody's like, ah! <laughs> he had the juice, man. He had the juice. You heard they're making a uh, biopic on him? Man, I, I I saw that, man. I'm like, I'm, I'm definitely interested in that, man. I wonder how they're gonna play everything out. I yeah. really do. Yeah, did man. You, did you ever see the documentary? I said, which one? Surviving yeah. Never? Nah, I never watched. Leaving Surviving Neverland? Never? Yeah, Leaving yeah, yeah, Neverland. Nah, nah, I ain't watched yeah. that. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. I mean, you know, it, it, when people can't defend themselves, man, I, you know, uh-huh. I didn't watch that. Oh, okay, okay. So. Uh, but like one one thing I, I did want to get uh before we we end the show is uh is kind of kind of when you were mentioning with the music industry kind of like influencing stuff like that like the drama or the violence and stuff like that like condoning mm-hmm. it yeah you think that's what happened with Biggie and Tupac situation man a lot of people say man it was purposely blown up you know what I'm saying to uh-huh. lead to the demise of these people. So it's it's always hard to throw in conspiracies because they just conspiracies, man. There ain't no real evidence, man. Um, but it's just the thought and, and process. But um, everybody say, I mean, it's on record, man. Pac, Pac didn't have no, you know, uh, real beef with the whole East Coast thing. Um, mm-hmm. And then even his death uh, didn't have much to do with the whole East Coast biggie thing. So I think, man, you know, so, you know, it seems... It's so hard to speak on things, cause I, I just I'm just I'm just trying to be humble enough to just say I don't know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. So anything I say today, man, I understand. I don't know what I'm talking about, so I'm just trying to participate in conversation. But uh, it, you know, so you hate the fact that Biggie died because uh, that was definitely a settlement murder. Um, I don't know if it was in retaliation or not, but you know, Pac, you know, it seems that Pac, you know, got himself involved, you know, in, in some gang cultures, you know, that just had some, you know, serious consequences, despite all the other crazy things he had going on in his life. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, man, for me, man, I was a big Tupac fan. I really felt like Pac was like, to me, it's like, man, this dude lived like five or six lives. And they realized, man, he was only like 20, 25 years old. And that whole Tupac story was like, man, it was, it was really, it was like four year period, five year period where he did all of this thing. You know what I'm saying? From movies to all these legends. And it just feel like a lifetime of work that he did in a very, very short amount of time. That's how impactful he was. Yeah, they were well, both because they were both young at the end. I mean, they yeah. were all, like in their 20s, like that's crazy. Yep. Like, I, I, I don't know, like, I, it's like I just like how you were mentioning, like just talking, but like I wonder, like I feel like I just wonder, like wonder if Shook ever had like a big impact in both both of their deaths. If who? Shook Knight. Yeah, it seems to, that Shook legitimately loved Tupac, man. So that so the people who are close to the situation, nobody believes Shook had anything to do. Oh no, with Tupac. Yeah, that's just more like just stories oh, okay. and conspiracy theories. Uh, they say you know Suge and Pac had real love for each other. You know that's like according to the outlaws, according to all you know everybody who was close to the situation. Nobody really felt like Suge. Um, but I don't know about Biggie, man. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they just say probably Puff was involved with it, but who knows? <laughs> man, this guy Puff, they made, they made that dude like say to himself, bro, is he really that bad? I'm not too sure, my guy. I just, he don't I look, think see, I just... he don't look scary. Shoot. <laughs> <laughs> he look like he's gonna have a good time out there. <laughs> no, but I think the one last thing I'll probably say is uh, I think he kind of gave, I think, all his music, all Biggie music rights to his moms not too long ago, I, I believe. Oh, he did? Okay, I believe. Okay. I heard. I'm not too sure if that's true or not. But he also, I think, uh, stepped down from his 
what uh the company or whatever the revolution Revolt. 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 yeah something yeah, like yeah, that yeah, yeah he stepped yeah. down and stuff like that too so yeah one he got his hands full but he got his he hands does. full he does well my guy jason thank you for popping in the pod yeah, man, how many, how long, how long, yeah, yeah, man. That's Probably fine, almost bro. close to that three-hour mark. Yeah, man. I told you, man, I was free. I was free to do whatever, man, so. <laughs> no, but for sure, uh, again, thank you for giving me your time. Thank you for signing in the pod. Yeah, no problem, man. Yeah, for uh, sure. Really uh, grateful knowledge from the history teacher of cannabis. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there, there you go, the... man. We didn't get to the history of cannabis. Yeah, not could, really, but you're yeah, next time. history teacher for sure, yeah. bro. <laughs> yeah, man, definitely. Uh, visit the website, you know, janemarys.com, J-A-N-E-M-A-R-Y-S. The Instagram is Jane at Mary's. So um, we're doing big things, man. But, you know, more importantly, we just... I'm just having fun making a great product for people, man, that people can use. Uh, you know, can you imagine having a great taste of functional ice cream? So that's what we're working on. For sure. We can't wait to try it. And yeah, man, I got you. Man. I'm going to send you some. I got, I'm sending you some. Oh, tomorrow. for sure. For sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so uh, hopefully everybody, uh, and then I'll drop your Instagram and stuff like that. Uh, I'll leave, drop the link too right now. Perfect. Somewhere perfect. Right there. But uh, again, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for listening to another episode of Can of Vive. So next time, have a good one.